Hello and welcome to another High Rollers. We're back, baby. We're back. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, welcome, everyone. I'm your dungeon master, Mark Sherlock Humes, and I'm joined this week by our regular players. We have no special guests, I'm afraid, this week. Um, after our very exciting things recently, but instead, this week we have our wonderful players. We have Rhiannon and, and Kim. Hello. It's Kim. It's and me. on the other side, it's the other side now. We have Trot. <laughs> Katie and Tom. Hi. Oh, they're all in weird Tower. places. Don't worry about this fella. He'll okay. be. We'll talk about him in a bit. Um, but hello, everybody, and welcome back. Yes, hi, rollers. We're back with the regular crew, um, and we are gearing up for our brand new campaign, Althea: The Dragon Empire, launching on November fifth. That's right. Oh, it's going wow. to be soon. Remember, remember, the fifth of November, November for new Did campaign Bowie dragons see this? and thoughts. That's right. Um, and uh, but in the meantime, because we've got a couple, we've got a couple of no weeks. No hold on, Mark. Hold on. Hey! He's done it. He's done it. He's done it. Good job. Um, but we've got a couple of weeks before that kicks off. So in the meantime, Four. we are going to be five, three, three. four. Two? Several. <laughs> Several weeks before that kicks off, we are going to be playing some different TTRPGs, and for this week, we're going to be playing The Lord of the Rings Role Playing by Freely. Uh, this is the fifth edition supplement. They also do another game called The One Ring, which is a whole different system, but because we're used to playing D&D 5e, and you probably just watched our Baldur's Gate cast adventure, which was using fifth edition D&D, we thought we would play the 5e version, so you're all familiar with most of the rules. But before we get into that, I have got a whole piece of paper full of announcements to talk about. Wow. Oh boy, it's printed and everything. It's printed and everything. And the first thing to mention is a big thank you to today's sponsor, Woo! Moonlight Maps. Do you have a button for that, Chris Trump? Yeah! Woo! Oh, it does. Here we go. <laughs> um, I love battle maps. Theatre of the mind is fine and all, but I love being able to give my players a visual representation of where they are, what's around them, and also using terrains and miniatures to highlight cool strategies or interesting things that can be in interacted with in an encounter. Well, but finding the right maps, the right terrain, the right miniatures is a bunch of extra prep time that I could be spending to come up with irrelevant throwaway NPCs and adorable critters like door-opening imps. Yeah. Um, yeah. Nice but luckily... Moonlight Maps is launching a Kickstarter on October the 10th for their plain terrain. Ba, ba, ba. Oh, oh, you've got it. Yeah. Beautiful <laughs> environmental maps with static cling terrain objects and tokens that you can lay down to easily create a plethora of different locations. A plethora? No need for crummy dry erase sketches or pretend this is ice. You can have an entire world of diverse biomes at your fingertips. And in fact, here's one I made earlier. <laughs> uh, so this is using their Tundra box. Um, and I also have used some of their cling terrain here. You can, Rhiannon, Hello. Peel, peel a piece up. Oh, oh, peel it up and pop oh. it back down. <gasps> Woo, slap oh. it down. Yeah. Oh, that's oh. so satisfying. Nice. Um, so, uh, the Kickstarter runs from October 10th to November 9th and includes eight plain terrain packs that contain six unique terrains, as well as six plus sheets of matching static cling assets. They're reusable, no adhesive, and pre-cut, unique Ooh, to each environment. They were environment really easy pack. to use. They were so easy to so use. So easy to use. So easy to use. Um, back, the, back the campaign in the first 72 hours and you'll get a free gelatinous icosahedron, which is a D20 shape, uh, sharp-edged resin dice. Nice. Ooh. Bam. That's cool as hell. Moonlight maps. Can you hold, up, really cool. can you ha um, ha hold up some of the other sticky things? I saw, like, yes. is there a building? Yeah, the back, on the back. Uh, uh, the last page, last page. Yeah, that one. That's, oh. that's so oh. handy. They're nice. Oh, oh. So, so handy. I, I, yeah, and then you've got like big ice rocks. There's a bunch oh, of this stuff. Very um, nice like little barrels. I could put these on my yeah. fridge. You could put it's like, like the same sticky on the fridge. That rocks. That rocks. Uh, but yeah, thank you very much, Moonlight Maps, for sponsoring today's episode, uh, today's stream. Because of the rocks. Uh, go, go, what's that? Because of the rocks. That's why I said that rocks. That rocks. Nice. Good job. No one Good job, Tom. So if you're uh, watching this on YouTube, there is a link in the video description. Go and click that to go to their Kickstarter, which, if you're watching this on YouTube, will be live now. If you're watching this on Twitch, the Kickstarter launches when this is out on YouTube. Uh, so click that link to follow 
and you'll be updated when the Kickstarter. Yes. Follow it. Live. It's not out yet, Thanks. so yep. but you, ready. Get, you will get notified when it does go yes. live if you click the link and follow it and sign in. A couple of days away. Kind of we'll remind yeah. you on Twitter as well. We mm -hmm. will. But yeah, thank you, Moonlight thank Max. You. Uh, yeah. Wonderful stuff. Right. Um, <laughs> I at some point need to find time to clear all this away because we're not going to be using this for what we're doing next. But I have some other announcements before that. Uh, two conventions, in fact, woo, I want to talk about uh, that are happening very, very soon. Um, on M uh, MCM London Comic Con is at the end of this month. That's very soon. Um, I will be there on Friday the 27th and Saturday the 28th. On Friday, I'll be doing a meet and greet signing at 2 p.m. Um, in the meet and greet zone. And then at 4.30 p.m. on the center stage, uh, I will be DMing a special one shot with a bunch of other UK TTRPG people. The likes of Casper Cartwright, uh, Jasper Cartwright, uh, Johnny Chiodney, uh, Jess Duell, uh, Liv Kennedy, and uh, Shamini Blungle as well. Uh, the one shot is about a halfling mafia wedding. Uh, so that'll be <laughs> cool. a ton of fun to come and watch that. Yeah. Um, that's just me, but I will be there on the Saturday wandering around the con as well. Um, but if you'd like to come and meet me and get me signed, especially if you're going to go meet maybe the Baldur's Gate 3 cast mm -hmm. and you would like to get a little bing bong signature somewhere, what there and where is this it? guy. Uh, that is on Friday the 27th at uh, 2 p.m. the meet and greet and 4.30 p.m. You're going to try and make of a button, aren't November. you? Of November. Mm -hmm. No, October. October, October. Mm -hmm. October. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's great. Carry on. I will. I'm about to move on to my other point, so well, if don't. you want to... <laughs> I'm going to keep well, delaying reiterate. for a little reiterate. bit. Reiterate. That's on Friday the 27th and Saturday the 28th. Uh, uh, 2 oh, p.m. on the Friday. And the 28th. And 4.30 p.m. on the Friday on <laughs> the centre stage. I'm just saying stuff to throw him off now, because this madman tried to make a button. Shall I just move on? Move on. Then. Right. <laughs> um, uh, the next thing to mention is Wales Comic Con in Telford, uh, which is on the 18th to 19th of November. A bunch of us, not just me, but a few of us from High Rollers are going to be there at Wales Comic Con in Telford, uh, doing a number of different Excellent. signings and meet and greet sessions, as well as the panels. Tickets are available via the Wales Comic Con website. Lovely. That gets a real... Oh, that's one. a one! <laughs> oh, wow! Oh, boy. 20 Perfect. from me! Um, you, know, you know who else is going to um, Wales Comic Con? Who? The Steward of Gondor oh, and yes. King Theoden! Yep, so oh, very God, well aligned, like very well aligned oh. into what we're going to be doing today. Look at he's um, going. We don't have a, oh. we don't have a dundons or anything, so I just have to just fall no, into this, good. don't I? We're yeah. <laughs> You can't That's do copyright. that. That's copyright. Um, um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Just change the notes. Let's <laughs> use <laughs> <laughs> a different franchise. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> um, you got a friend of me. What about? She's this is what happens when we can't lie. Would we get a copyright strike for doing that? They're taking the hobbits to Isengard. 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 Isengard.
The heavy thud of an oak barrel full of fresh ale echoes around the front desk of the inn. A heavy-set man with a large moustache brings a cup of foamy beer to his lips as his eyes glance across the red leather-bound book in front of him, full of numbers and costs, names and debts. The fading pink and copper light of the setting sun drifts in through a large window nearby as the men and women working at the inn begin to light candles and lanterns to prepare for the evening. Barnabas Butterbur sets aside his book and rubs his eyes as the door to the prancing pony swings open and the first of our company arrives. Let's begin with Kim. Could you please tell us who you are playing and describe them as well, please? I am playing Boren, son of Dory. He's a dwarf. Um, and yeah, the dwarfiest dwarf that ever dwarfed. <laughs> I think, picture your classic Tolkien dwarf. That's, that's Boren. Um, very much helmeted, lots of facial hair. I'd like to say that the beard is almost as long as his body, um, because if I was a dwarf and a man, I'd want that. Sure. Um, I want as much facial hair as possible. Um, and you are playing a messenger, which yes. is your calling. Now, this game, we do. there are classes and things like that, but they're called callings in this, and you are a messenger. You are also quite a wealthy dwarf. Um, you are rich. very rich, uh, a, a, a rich. prosperous trader, in fact. You are a jewelsmith, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, and so would we see kind of in the beard, like, you know, it's braided and, like, kept in, like, neat clasps and, like, silver lockets and things like that? You know, does Boren wear lots of jewellery about their person? Like, you know, are there, you know, are there any signs of who they might mm. be? Or do they keep themselves more covered up? Are they like, you know, in a traveler's coat or something like that? I think um, probably unwisely the former, where if there's a thing for bling, bling is on the thing. Sure. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> the beard is like, you know, heavily plaited and braided, and there's, you know, gold and trinkets and jewels kind of um, in amongst that. Um, you know, on his knuckles, every, every finger has rings and bracelets and okay. chains and he he jangly um you know okay. so not very stealthy probably not the wisest decision for traveling on the road maybe you've been but... lucky so um as you enter the inn you almost hear the fading kind of calls of a group that you actually traveled to brie with there would have been like a caravan probably traders travelers um nobody that you know in any great detail but you they kept you company on the road you've probably shared fire and you know songs and stories with them on the road and they just kind of there is a a, a very um, pleasant sort of like, ah, farewell, Baron. They kind of like call to you as they're heading off to somewhere else in Bree. They've kind of escorted you to the to the tavern, to the inn, um, and then they kind of like call out to you, various men and women, but just general travelers that you've been traveling with. And being a, a messenger, being somebody who is probably well known in various parts of Eriador and Middle Earth, um, you are you are. They treated you very well, and you've been uh, in good company. Uh, Barnabas will look up and say, oh. Hello there, Master Dwarf. Uh, can I help you? Are you looking for a room or uh, anything for the uh, for the evening? Um, Am I looking for a room? Well, I was going to say, so as <laughs> Barnabas asks you the question, mm. we see a flashback. Oh. Uh, we actually kind of cut back, oh. and uh, it is you, uh, Borin. You are out near the Blue Mountains. Mm. You had traveled to meet with a gemstone trader, a fellow dwarf, um, but the flashback catches you almost as if this was a cut of a movie. We see you exiting uh, this dwarven uh, door cut into to the Blue Mountains, furious. Like you're quite angry. Um, you've got your mules kind of loaded up with your goods. The deal had basically uh, you were you had been promised like a certain quality of these gemstones, and when you arrived, the quality was not what you expected. Yes, um, you've been, this, this is something that you would absolutely uh, uh, have almost feeling like a bit of a waste of your time. Do you take me for a fool? <laughs> yes, and like you kind of like you've had this big argument with the dwarves inside, and you've you've left in a, in an anger. And as you arrive outside and begin to kind of load back up your gear, uh, a a very tall figure wearing grey robes oh. is uh, passing and will kind of plant a staff on the ground <gasps> and say, uh, a deal has not gone well for you, it seems, Boren, son of Dory. Uh, and you would know this. Uh, the dwarves call him uh, Thanankur, uh, but you also know him by the Legolas. name Grey Pilgrim. <laughs> 
<laughs> Gandalf the Grey. Uh, and he will look down at you. And you have met Gandalf before. Mm -hmm. uh, he has been a friend to you and, and the people of Erebor for many years um, after saving uh, Thorin Oakenshield and being part of that whole endeavor. Um, and he leans down, he kind of gives you a little hug. He's just like, it's good to see you, my friend. Good to see you. Um, I have a request. I have heard that your dealings here in the Blue Mountains have not gone well. No, these, these peasants, they think that they can pass fool's gold for gold toward me, mm. a dwarf. Yes, yes, I did fear that the, the ore has been uh, of rather poor quality of late, and when I heard that you were coming, I suspected that there might be uh, uh, an anger, a flame that needed to be uh, uh, dampened a little. Well, perhaps I can offer you something. There is some... Um, I have need of your services as a messenger, and uh, I'm gathering a company in the village of Bree. Um, I will be in the uh, the Inn of the Prancing Pony on the third moon of mid of mid spring. I would like you to be there, and uh, I can make sure that you are adequately compensated. The people of Bree have put together a small purse, perhaps to uh, recompense you for this uh, lost out endeavor. Well, I was going to say that I. Who am I to turn down? Uh, a, a request by Gandalf the Grey, but ah. you have certainly made the deal a lot sweeter for the mention of coin. Well, I know how to deal with dwarves, Master Borin. I know how to deal with dwarves, and I know that your love of gold and minerals, you are a businessman, after all, and business it shall be. Um, and he say, well, then I can count on you to be there, then, at the Inn of the Prancing Pony on the third moon of mid-spring. I will write that all down four pence, and <laughs> yes, you can rely on me. Well, I will accompany you at least until the end. I have travels to be off, and he will kind of come with you and things. But then, yeah, you kind of, we immediately cut back to the inn of the Prancing Pony, and you know that you are here to meet with Gandalf. Um, uh, you have arrived promptly on time, um, and yeah, you are, uh, you, you speak to uh, Barnabas. Yeah, I do good business. I'm prompt. Business. I'm on time. You speak with Barnabas. Um, he tells you, he'll just say, uh, well, yes, Master Gandalf did reserve a table. I can send you over there. He's not here yet, but I, I can send you over there, and uh, would you like a drink, uh, something to eat. A flagon of your finest mead. <laughs> of course, of course, uh, absolutely. One of the barley butterbers. Uh, not a problem, sir. Not a problem. Yeah, um, he will. He will charge you uh, for What's such a thing. Fun? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they, welcome, welcome to a game where money and things is going to matter. Um, this is... I would have thought Gandalf had paid for that in advance, but no, <laughs> he is a cheap wizard. He is a very cheap wizard. <laughs> Gandalf's tap. Uh, <laughs> Gandalf's tap. Non-existent. It will only be one copper coin. You do have a character sheet with some money. I believe you have. Gold. I have seventeen. Silver pennies. Silver pennies. Well, then you can take one of those silver pennies and turn it into ten copper pieces, and then that cup yeah. of uh, of ale will cost you one copper piece. But then you sit down, and a lovely frothy uh, big flagon of beer is brought out to you um, and laid down before you, and you enjoy that. Meanwhile, as you are doing that, uh, another visitor, in fact, a pair of visitors, uh, arrive oh. at the oh, inn Christ. of the party. <laughs> <problem. laughs> As uh, Barnabas returns, having set you down for the evening, maybe a, you know, you know, an hour or so has passed, just awaiting. Um, the door opens. Uh, it is now very dark. Like the sun is really just on the edge of the horizon, just a faint glimmer of pink and copper kind of casting across the sky. And as the door opens, uh, at first we don't see anybody, and then the camera cuts down. <laughs> see a pair of hobbits, uh, shire folk, as they are called, um, and Barnabas will be like, oh, young, hello, little masters, and he'll like lean over the, the thing, hello there. Good and evening. He sees, That's I was going to say. the accent you were meant to do. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to say, we see two hobbits, Tom and Rhiannon. Let's start with Rhiannon, then we'll go to Tom. Could you describe your character and tell us who you're playing? I'm playing Bungo Grubs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she is a uh, like a, a well well versed in medicine, so she stumbles in. I, I imagine her and my friend uh, Grundle yeah. Boffin. Grundle Boffin, <laughs> kind of, we kind of like barge our way through. We're both trying to get through the door at the same time. We're just <laughs> oh, we're each through. other. There's yeah. a yeah. moment yeah. where well, I think especially because with with uh, you, Bongo, Bongo has quite a lot of packs of like cooking supplies kits. and medicine yeah. kits. So your pack is massive, and then you've probably got a good adequate size adventuring pack on you. And they get the packs get stuck in the door, <laughs> and Barnabas has to kind of like come out, and he helps like oh, one, two, three, <laughs> and you kind of pull you your flying, yeah, yeah like, oh, <laughs> there's a big clap and there's a big noise, but the two of you yeah. are pulled through. Um, yeah, uh, anything has, else on the yeah, air? Go on. She has curly brown hair, all sort of pulled back in like a little bandana, like a cotton bandana. She has like the typical like Hobbit, Perfect. like cotton dress with a little apron on. Mm -hmm. She's constantly rubbing her hands on to keep her hands clean. So it's all dirty. All at the dirty. Front. Yeah. She's been like 
mucky, but she's well looked after. She's rosy cheeks. Like she, you can tell she's had a good life. She's been well looked after. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and she's just she carries a little vial of like leeches and everything as well. Oh. She has all kinds of little medical medical kit, medical all right? Bits and herbs Perfect. and bits and bobs all on her. So that's Bungo, and then uh, Grundle Boffin. Grundle Boffin <laughs> is, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, a hobbit. Yes. So I look like. So, welcome to the player who knows very little about Lord of the Rings. I watched way. it. You uh, watched it once, once. like years ago. <laughs> yeah. um, so I am a, a hobbit. Mm -hmm. I have a green vest. I have okay. a brown cloak. Great. I have a little clasp. No, no I don't, no. because that's probably special gift. Special gift. <laughs> <laughs> Not I played the Lords of Lorien Fall, sir. I have a blue sword that glows. Nope. No. <laughs> I have, I have, you have a golden ring. ring. I have a ring. <laughs> I have a gold. <laughs> Three elven does he, hairs. So yeah. does Grundle have like short hair, long hair? Is he thin? Medium. Medium, okay, medium length hair. He is probably the most average, average man hobby. you have ever sure. seen. Okay. Um and uh yeah. Alright. Well I can tell you at least one thing for you. So uh, Grundle is a treasure hunter, uh, a burglar, as they are sometimes called in the Shire. Yes, uh, I am. So you are sneaky and you're very good at being hidden and undetected. Um, so uh, and then uh, Bungo, uh, Bungo Grubs is a scholar, uh, particularly of leechcraft or medicine oh. uh, knowledge um, oh. of those kind of skills. Leechcraft. Like leechcraft. Of cooking. Yeah, so it's basically yes. like yes. craft is the term used because none of you you're not wizards. Wizards are very specific thing in this world. What? But there are small magics in the world. And there is also great skill of like being able to craft something can almost be magical in Middle Earth because mm. you can be so skilled at it, and that is what we call craft. Um, and in this particular case, Bungo is so good at natural healing that it can almost be magical yeah. in the way that it can be done. All right. Um, so the, we see the two of you. You get bundled <laughs> in, and then as you go flying through the air, we also get another flashback. Uh, this time in the Shire, uh, the green rolling hills, the little round doors. Um, but Bungo and and Grundle, you are in <laughs> the way you enunciate it. Of course. Bungo. <laughs> Grundle. Um, you are in trouble. What sort of trouble might Bungo and Grundle be? <laughs> what? It's like real life. Uh, you were trying to st maybe you were trying to steal supplies for me. Oh, I was <laughs> I was going to say that we're having a conversation. Well, you're both in trouble, so that's yes. the thing. So you've both got to be what? in a scenario that I you are in you some sort of trouble. What depth of trouble are we talking? Oh, yeah. Are race? No, no. <laughs> I'm talking like uh, shenanigans, kind of like you've been caught, you know, in Farmer Maggot's field, or like you've been caught scraping okay. apples. You're in, like, you're being chased by like wild boars out in the woods or something like. You're in some sort of mild peril. We're talking amongst other hobbits. I say. That's not my wife, that's a turnip. And then we're chased by our wives. <laughs> it's a very hobbity thing to happen, right? <laughs> right, okay. Um, so, all right, I'm gonna build it. Yeah, well, let's, let's yes that. and this, let's yes and it. Um, so yeah, you caused, uh, I think that the idea is maybe not your own wives, because I don't want to speak for any, I mean, you can have a wife if you like. Yeah, um, But sure. you have, the, the joke, for whatever reason, the, the recent ongoing politics of the Shire, there's been like, you've gravely in Insulted the local sheriff, which is like the local <laughs> cop, basically, like the, the hobbit cop. Which is my um, wife. <laughs> which is <laughs> wife. <laughs> sure. You've uh, gravely insulted them, um, and they've kind of chased you out of the village. Uh, Bungo's come trundling after you to look after you, um, but as you're going to get out into the wilds, um, you happen to just come across like a, I would say, like a flock of like really aggressively angry ravens, and they've been chasing you. They're, like, literally, <laughs> this flock of them are chasing you out of the Shire, basically. And you're running through the woods and they're like dive bombing you, trying to like peck at you and, you know, claw you and like grab onto your things. Um, Carry us away. And you're running through one of these like uh, like a big cabbage field, and like the birds are just swarming around you. Take one more step. Bungo's really <laughs> struggling. She's got all her carry <laughs> like red bags. cheeks. Like you're really struggling. And I think at that point, Bungo, you trip um, and you go down on the floor. And like that episode of Pokemon where Pikachu's no. getting attacked by the no. yeah. um, wow. like, oh, But then you suddenly hear like a. And all these fireworks start going off in the air, and the birds just. 
and they scatter. Am I in heaven? Did I die? <laughs> <laughs> and you uh, kind of smell sweet, flowery kind of smoke, um, and you both would uh, would absolutely recognise the smell of Gandalf's fireworks, mm. having seen these uh, like big events and big birthday parties throughout the year. Um, and you look up, Bunko. You kind of like peek your head up. Um, you <laughs> see the Grundles like dead. you're like <laughs> hidden amongst all the cabbages. Um, you see stood far above you, grey robes, kind of all the bottoms all muddy from the, the field that he's trundled through, kind of hands on hips. Well, a fine mess you've gotten into, grubs and boffin, isn't it, I see? Another fine <laughs> hobbit mess. Um, oh, what happened? Come on. And he kind of picks you up a little bit, <laughs> like dusts you off a little. Are you hurt? Oh, no, I'm okay, thank you, Gandalf. Oh. Um, what was all this then? Why were you being chased by those birds? Oh, well, you see here, Gandalf. <laughs> mm-hmm. Right, wait. The sheriff. Yes, I'm familiar with your wife, Grundle Boffin. I compared Boffin. her to an overly large turnip. Oh, foolish boy. Oh, how the boys laughed. <laughs> yes, the boys got... laughed, I'm sure. He's not got a talent with words there, Gandalf, I tell you. Unbelievable. No. <laughs> so he fled, as we do. Ravens. <laughs> Mm-hmm. You saw him. I saw Great them, ghastly yes. ravens, Gandalf, the size of houses. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the size of our houses, of course. Wow. Uh, ravens, they shouldn't act so. Even ravens, the most foul tempered of a corvid, shouldn't be this aggressive. But still, I'm glad I found the two of you. I have work for you. I have need of you. <gasps> what can we do, Gandalf? Anything? Well, oh, well you're keen for an adventure, <laughs> I see. Any brown nose or hair? I'm just happy to help. No, it's good. It's a good thing to get out. Would you be interested in taking a, a journey out of the Shire for a little bit? I have some friends of mine, and I think that some <laughs> hobbit sense might be needed. Have we left the Shire before? It's up to you. No. <laughs> well, unfortunately, you're out playing out of luck. I believe your wife is still on the lookout for you. So yes. Then. Lying low for a few days might be a wise idea. Um, well, I have need of you. I want you to travel to the Inn of the Prancing Pony in the village of Bree. It's not too far. A few days' travel. Oh, I love Bree. It's my favourite cheese. Yeah. Yes, I should know. Yes, well, there'll be plenty of cheese in the inn. Oh, don't say cheese. My mouth is watering. <laughs> Oh, that actually made my mouth water. Oh. He kind of <laughs> helps pack you up. <laughs> well, perhaps you can enjoy some of Barnabas' lovely brie, lovely cheese. My stomach's rumbling. <laughs> All right, let's get you... Fi- and he'll say, like, why don't we have a little campfire? We can have a snack, and then we'll tell you more about the details. Oh, yes, please. All right. And Gandalf will kind of say, he's aside, you get a little campfire going, and Gandalf, you know, you enjoy a lovely little camp meal with Gandalf. Um, and at which point he does press upon you. He basically recruits you into this company to travel to brie and join an adventure, is what he calls. It, uh, an adventure, all right, and that's and then we cut back to the end of the prancing pony, flying uh, through the air, <laughs> <going around the door. laughs> and, and I think that that's the point where uh, both of you rolled a d20 for me. Oh. Who, and tell me who gets the lowest. Nine. Five. Uh, Grundle, <laughs> as you go flying through the air, it's just the worst happening of luck that um, one of the kind of wait, uh, one of the waiter gentlemen is bringing out a large uh, oh, no. bear. <laughs> <laughs> and your face just goes fully plants into the camembert. Oh, yeah. uh, just, <laughs> just, <laughs> just like coaching yeah. and cheese. They're uh, expecting me to get up. I'm still just. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm so sorry about that, young master. Oh, how I mean, he's just like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you keep the keep the keep the cheese, then. It's, it's um, and he, uh, you kind of have a brief conversation with Barnabas. You would tell him that you're here to see Gandalf, and he will take you over to a table that is occupied by a dwarf. We'll come and sort of let you guys introduce yourselves momentarily, because I think I'm in heaven. <laughs> <laughs> we did die. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still getting over being sick, so... Um, <clears throat> as you are brought over to the table, uh, whilst this, this chicanery is going on, a... Uh, like weeks ago. A tall... Uh, a taller figure kind of enters the inn without anybody really noticing they are there. Uh, Chris Trot, would you like to tell us who you're playing and describe your character, please? Uh, I'm playing Ilvisar. Ilvasar. An elf. I look beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> I am Orlando Bloom <laughs> in the original Lord of the Rings. Sure. Just with a slightly different tweaks in character creation. Uh, sure. I'm a champion. Yes. Uh, so, so I assume I would be wearing armor. 
Yeah, yeah. So you are, um, you know, Legolas was an archer and sort of a uh, little more nimbly kind of like clad in like leather, so leather and things like that. Skinned. You're in like ring mail, like you have like, you look more like um, Elrond at the beginning when he's fighting in the in the battle, right? I was thinking Ooh. of the uh, the ranks of troops. Mm. Uh, so yeah, it, a soldier basically. Helm's deep. Um, and you have a spear, you have a spear and a shield, like that elegant. I take off my shield. helmet as I walk in and the hair just listening? spindles. Yeah. Oh, what kind of hair are we talking, down. blonde? Or are we longest blonde, longest hair, blonde hair we've ever seen. It looks like it's just just been brushed. Ilvisar. 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 Tiny little brush um, inside the helmet, so when you take it off, yes. it pulls it back neatly. It makes it um, glitter. Tuck it under my arm. So yeah, the champion is very much a classic kind of um, a really strong fighter, capable fighter, um, excellent in combat. You have an ability to kind of like surge yourself with energy and things like that. Almost, um, you know, almost kind of a bit more like Boromir's role, right? Really good fighter, but perhaps less of the sort of uh, follies of men and things like that. And you are one of the one of the elves, one of the great people. Uh, you are are an elf of Linden. You come from a place called Linden, um, and they are known as shipwrights. Great chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> Along with their great ships, they also make great chocolate as well. Uh, you're thinking of Lindorn. <laughs> oh, li is it Lindor? Lindor. Lindor yeah. yeah. Oh, no, I was Lind thinking of London. Um, <laughs> But yes, so you are one of the fair folk, uh, and uh, you uh, you could literally be as old as you want to be, really. Yeah. Like, uh, that would be very young for an elf. Like, you can be, like, thousands of years old. But at 400, you've been around. Um, you are you are considered young uh, for uh, Talented for, elves, for my age. But talented for your age. Strong, strong of body, quick of uh, of reflexes. Of dick. Um, and uh, what is uh, Elf? So we, <laughs> we bring him up. Yeah, sure. <laughs> what was that? Um, you know what he said. You know what he said. I caught the second half of it. <laughs> As you enter, you know exactly why you're here, and you do not need any introduction by the innkeeper or anything like that. You kind of step in, um, you know, as the, the twilight fades and now turns to fully night, um, you step in, and we see a flashback uh, cutting to a place called the Etten Moors, north of Rivendell, a place full of the foul spawn of the enemy. Goblins, orcs, trolls, and fouler things dwell here. Spiders and wolves and the like. And you have been hunting. You have been hunting uh, the great uh, uh, a troll, a deranged troll that has been terrorizing uh, the elves of Rivendell. And you and a hunting party have gone out to to find this beast. Um, and you've slain it. You've killed the beast. It's, it lays dead at your feet. And the elves are packing up, ready to leave, uh, when uh, a very familiar figure uh, will kind of step out of the tree, uh, their staff kind of held to one side. Um, I spin around. I was just sheathing my sword, and it goes right up to a spear right up to his beard. Stay your hand, Ilvisar. My apologies. Uh, and you I flick it away. <laughs> uh, and this is, uh, as the right, elves know him, this is Mithrandir. <laughs> uh, Myth Mithrandir. Mithrandir. This is yeah, Gandalf. I do a very gentle elven bow. Yeah, he will bow as well. Uh, I see that your hunt has been successful. Tell me, how have the Etnmores been of late? Uh, these creatures, they have been growing bolder. The plague spreads, unfortunately. Indeed it does. Stars are lengthening in the lands. Indeed, you speak wise. But we slay them. And indeed, it is for that reason that I have come to you, Ilvasar. You I have need. I have indeed. I have spoken with Lord Elrond, as well as the lords of, uh, of the Grey Havens, and I need a warrior of your skill and talent. I'm putting together a company. A shadow is growing in the south. I do not know where, but I need a group to seek out answers, and I would need a stalwart spear to protect them. If you would join us in this endeavor. Truly an honor from an alien. He will nod his head. I will be traveling. There is a, a human village, Bree. Uh, it is, I'm gathering the company there on the third moon of midwinter, of midspring. Uh, if you would join us there, Seek me out. There will be others as well, um, including one of the Dunedain. I don't raise my eyebrows like Chris Trot just did. Mm -hmm. I just do the the classic Elven side head tilt. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and with that, he will kind of clasp you on the shoulder and uh, kind of traditional kind of Elven sort of like hug, embrace kind of thing. And he just says, uh, "My heart is unburdened to know that you will be there. Your spear, swift as it is." Until Bree. Until then. 
uh, and he will nod his head uh, and leave you to it. And then we cut back. Um, I turn around and I'm like, Mithrin, dear! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Uh, God, right. he's hot in the oh, flesh! All right, Neil, too. <laughs> Calm down. Oh, dear. <laughs> but yeah, we cut back to the inn of the Prancing Pony, and looking around, you can, you, you with your elven eyes. Um, Piercing you, blue, with yeah. flecks of emerald. Yeah, I love it. Uh, I love it. Um, you <laughs> would see... Sorry, do we need to leave? Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> listen, oh Legolas God. was a very important figure in many young people's lives. No, I'm joking, I wasn't that into a Legolas. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you don't need to lecture me about that. <laughs> uh, for you, Ilvisar, uh, when you look around, you immediately can see... For, you see a, a hobbit with his face in a camembert. Um, <laughs> another hobbit trying to help him out of it. The two of them fighting over it, I assume, or, or having some sort of argument. You could talk <laughs> you also do see a dwarf, uh, and the relationship between elves and dwarves has never always has never been oh a peaceful one. Um, but uh, you do see them sat in there, and the rest of the people here you see mostly common folk, farmers, uh, you know, hunters, that sort of thing. Um, but you also see that a few of the men and women here are watching you and the dwarf and the hobbits with wicked eyes. Can you give me an insight oh. check? I certainly uh, can. Insight. With all of these dice. Oh, that's a natural one! <laughs> <laughs> We're back, baby! He's too busy swishing his well, hair. Well, I think it's more that, Ilvasar, you've probably not spent that much time amongst men. Um, you've mainly been around it's elves, and their hearts, their hearts are shrouded to you. But you can see that these are... You would probably still, even with a natural one, I'm still going to say that you still see that they are grim-faced and stoic. You know, they, they don't look jovial. Many of the people here are, like, singing and dancing and drinking and, like, eating good food, but there's a, a handfuls of them, pockets here and there, who just look, like, quite dour and, and uh, grim. What I'm going to do sure. to enhance my security going into this place is strategically place my helmet, buff it a little, so I've got a rear view mirror. <laughs> okay. You're using the reflection of your mirror. I'm going to occasionally your glance behind. down so I know what's coming up behind sure. me. All right. And then with that, as you kind of uh, you're keeping an eye out, you kind of fade almost into the shadows and kind of keep an, an observation on this this gathering. We are uh, at last meet with the last member of the company, um, and they do not enter because they have always been here waiting. Psych. Katie. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to tell us who you are play playing and what do they look like? I'm Aragorn, bitch! No, I'm not. I'm <laughs> Araniel, who is um, a ranger from the north. Um, she is, has been sitting in the corner in darkness with a hood up. Classic. Yep. Candle out. Little um, uh, pipe? No, 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 no. No, okay. no just, just glaring. Mm -hmm. Just glaring around. Um, watching the people in the establishment very closely. Yeah. Um, she has dark hair. You don't, you don't see it yet, but she has um, sort of waist length, long dark hair that looks a little bit disheveled. Um, she's basically, if, <laughs> if Aragorn and Arwen had a baby and sure. they were a ranger from the north. That's why we play it. That. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. She's, she's wearing all black. She's got a sword at her side, which mm -hmm. you don't see yet, but she's just yeah. silently watching. Mm -hmm. And she's been here for a while. Yeah, um, and it's worth noting that uh, you are a ranger of the north, which means that you are descended from the Dúnedain, from the lands of Arnor, which means you are actually not like a normal, you, you are much older than a normal human, um, and you are you have connections with the elves and things like that as well. You would, out of most, most people here have not noticed um, uh, Ilvisar enter, you absolutely would, uh, Araniel. You would also pick up on the same thing that he did, where you felt this presence that there are, there are, you would know them to be cutthroats. They are like brand, brigands and bandits, and they're here. They come by the inn, like the inn doesn't discriminate from them. Like they come in, they spend their coin, but they're definitely like here, and they are, you know, a presence. Um, but we see a flashback as the kind of your eyes light up as the the inn now fully illuminated for darkness, and we hear kind of little snippets of songs beginning to kind of spool up and things like that. But we see a flashback uh, to a place not far from Bree, a few days travel, four or five days travel along the East Road. Uh, as we see a great mountain uh, in the distance, uh, hills of mountains with an old ruin at the top of it. Uh, and at the base, uh, a campsite that looks over these lands uh, as you look upon Amon Sul, also known as Weathertop. Um, and you have met with your old friend, Gandalf the Grey. 
uh, who has arranged to meet you here. Um, and sat around the campfire, Gandalf kind of emerges. Uh, he oh, sits down with a huff, places his staff down, pulls out a pipe, um, and takes a one long. Radil, how have your travels been? Not as quiet as I would have liked. Mm. You have felt it as well as I have, as well as the elves. The shadow is growing. Unfortunately, very quickly. It is for this reason that I've called you. I had hoped to meet with a company, but now other business must take me elsewhere. I need you to lead this company. Something in the lands around Bree. It is shrouded from even me, even from Lord Elrond and many of the others. It is hidden and it is growing stronger. A darkness, a power, the power of the enemy. Meet with this company, lead them, guide them. You will find some of your companions, other rangers. They are at the crossing of uh, the Sand Ford, Sang Ford to the south. Take them there, see if they know anything of the recent troubles, or if they have any clue of where this shadow may be. It is to you I trust. You are an heir of Arnor, and you carry a weapon that will be useful against the enemy. It is on you that I place this burden, but in you I have hope. This company? Yes. I trust I will know who you have summoned. Mm -hmm. He will, uh, I will, I will tell you of them and speak of them. They are people I trust or, or they are ones of whom I believe will be of great benefit. Remember that even in the smallest places can most unexpected strengths be found. And with that, uh, with that, the flashback, we kind of cut back to the, the Mon Times and you now see the individuals that Gandalf had told you about, uh, the ones that he had anticipated would be called here. <laughs> um, and the last thing that he told you, just to reiterate, is he, he basically gave you an instruction to travel south of Bree and head to a place called Sangford, uh, Sangford. Um, Sandford, it's called. Sandford. Um, San, not Sandford. Village of Sandford. Sandford. Um, it is a journey south. Um, you have maps and the, and the resources and the likes, but yeah, he has basically sent you there to meet with other rangers who might know more. Um, and that is going to be the initial part of this little adventure. Um, but yeah, you see everyone gathered in the Inn of the Prancing Pony. Um, as you do, uh, as everybody is gathered, like what does what happens next? Like, uh, Boren, you have been introduced to these two hobbits. Um, uh, you see them; they they are probably Barnabas would probably lead them over, knowing that they are also here to meet Gandalf. Um, and then, yeah, but the the rest of you, I think that at this point, uh, Ilvaris and uh, Iraniel have. Uh, it's up to you guys when you want to review yourselves. But I'll throw it over to the new players to and can sit here and enjoy you. For a <laughs> <laughs> Hello, uh, are you. I think this might be another one that Gandalf's been talking about. You've been talking to Gandalf? I have been talking to Gandalf. I take it you two have been talking Bloody to Gandalf tall, too. Bloody tall, isn't he? He's very tall. Oh, towers over us two. Let me tell you, my father went on an adventure with Gandalf. No, he did not. not. He did. Tell me more, tell he me more. He did. Oh, they went across the... Well, actually, they started in the Shire. That's where you two would be wow. from, is it not? Yeah. Uh, yes, yeah, they yeah. did. Actually, yes, they did, as I recall. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you, you would know about um, old weird, weirdo Baggins adventure that you went on. Like, everybody knows, like, Baggins went on. Oh, oh, yeah, he's a fucking weirdo. Like, yeah, really like bloody freak. <laughs> <laughs> he's rich, though. In. Yeah, he's very he rich, though. He yelled at me the other day. He steps in. Weird. <laughs> he snapped at me. <laughs> What, what did you do? I don't know. I just speaking to him, and all of a sudden he went. Get it! <laughs> I have, I have heard he's, the elves. he's not the same <laughs> he, as, as as when he was on the journey. No, no. no weird, weird bastard. <laughs> <laughs> he's been trying to finish his book. He's just been hovelled up in his his house the whole time, just writing, writing. Nothing about him, though. What are you drinking? Yeah. I'm drinking beer. <laughs> What was it called? But Barnabas but Butterberg beer. Are you too old enough to be drinking? How dare you? How <laughs> well, you look dare like you. children. We're halflings. Uh, you act like children. 
I thought he does. I just <laughs> get ravenous for camera bear. You know what it is. <laughs> you, oh yeah, there's a point. Grundle is still like around his face is like caked in hard <laughs> and hard goes to grab it. Give it back. <laughs> <laughs> is that insane? It works. <laughs> well, I, 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 I bloody love two of that. Two of. Th- Oh, oh, of the beer. What you're drinking, not you. Well, I, well, I, I mean... Why do you use plenty? Aren't <laughs> 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 you the charmer? It would be a bit more charming if you know. weren't covered in cheese. Although I am partial to a bit of brie. Was that? <laughs> <laughs> not really. <laughs> are, you guys, are you buying your own drinks or are you trying to convince Boren to buy you a drink? Do I? No. You look like you've got money. I do. You do look like you've got money. <laughs> I don't know where you got that impression from. <laughs> Pop one of the little ringlets off your beard. Not that one! Okay, <laughs> not that one. That was gifted to me by my great, 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 great grandmother. What about that one? That one was by my great grandmother's aunt. Oh, tell that me about one? that one, yeah. That one was my grand cousin's sister. I don't know that one. My... While this is going on. <laughs> yeah, thank you, thank you. Thank no, you. I'm just going to let yeah, it happen. Sure. I am looking at this entire scene through my helmet reflection. <laughs> I like sigh to myself <laughs> and resign myself to a quiet corner, which I'm hoping is well, near. Do I spot Iraniel? Yes. The two of you would definitely. Okay, in which show. case, I will sit down, not look at them, mm-hmm. and just say, please tell me this is not. The company <laughs> which the Grey Pilgrim What's sent wrong? <laughs> Tell us about that one. I believe he said that um, strength could be found in unlikely places. Mr. and dear. <sighs> he was better when he was white. <laughs> Uh, that's not happened yet, and that phrasing is really bad. Do not take that out of context. <laughs> so, Tom, you haven't seen all of the rings. There's a point where it goes from grey to white. I, to be clear. It's in the future. As, yeah, know, we're nowhere near that also yet. It hasn't happened yet. We're right. Between anyway. In which case, I rephrase it to... Editing, that, that never happened. <laughs> he can be... He can be strange at times. He works in mysterious ways. <laughs> strange, he's Jesus. but usually, <laughs> usually Jesus he knows. Strange, yes. He knows what he's talking about. <laughs> Take that out of context. <laughs> I'm afraid that they are drawing a little bit too much attention to themselves in this establishment. You have no. This was my second uncle's third cousin, twice removed. It's beautiful. Quite the scandal, actually. Oh, really? Yes, yes, yes. Perhaps you should convene elsewhere. <gasps> yes. Sure. Maybe outside. Do you want to see my leeches? Tavern. Well, that, it, that, is, it is basically nighttime. That is point. quite incredible, so young lady. Or bring do we have a room, room in an inn? You do not have a room paid for. Oh, pay yes. for room. Can I, um, called, um, can I sure. go up to <laughs> Barnabas? Oh. And oh, and it, now, does Iraniel have like a nickname? Or would Iraniel still just be known as Iraniel? Oh, Iraniel? Remember that like Strider, Strider had a nickname because like he was trying to hide who he was. Um, I feel like she would. I feel yeah. like it'd be cool. Sure. Do you have an idea of what your nickname no. might be? No. Uh, let me see if there's uh, some suggestions for it in the book that I have. The book! <laughs> I've got the book. the book! I've got a book right here! <laughs> oh, it's me! Sorry, what were you looking for? I was I was trying nickname. to listen hard to Leech Chat over there. We're no, drawing no, I don't Leech have any nicknames. Leech Amanda. We're, 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 we're drawing them. That's Maybe like a flower's name or something could be quite good if you can think of one. Reggie. That's not... Sorry, I... <laughs> Reggie? What about... Um... Ace. Maverick. Thorn. Uh, Ricky Kool-Aid. <laughs> Would you like to see our leeches? Uh, no, I'm good. I can... I... We're drawing leeches. You can't see them. You don't have to have a nickname. What about a herb? Rosemary. Uh, thyme. Thyme. Lavender. Thicket. Marjoram. Heather. Bush. <laughs> Bush. <laughs> Min. Thistle heart. Thistle heart. Oh, cool. that's cute. Cool name. There we go. Uh, so Barnabas would look over at you and be like, oh, oh, Miss Thistle heart, I, I didn't see you, didn't see you come in. Um, how can I help you? Uh, is there something amiss? Have you got um, a room? Oh, yeah, yes, I have plenty of rooms. Just for yourself or are you with traveling companions or? Purely for meeting purposes. 
Oh, right, one of those kind of rooms. Um, right, well, um, yes, I mean, I could probably, uh, one of the larger uh, common rooms. I mean, it, it, it normally sleeps four, but uh, it would be perfect for that sort it of thing. It will be fine. Uh, it, it would be, um, oh, that would be um, two silver pieces. To see an right. elven gauntleted hand just slide it out, of, out of. Sure. Out of the shadows. Oh. Right, he just looks over and he and always... I, I step forward. Okay, yeah, he sees you for the first time. He's... And you see, like, this man, like, is totally blown away. Like, like nobody's really noticed Ilvasar here yet because he doesn't want to be noticed, really. Um, whereas, like, when Barnabas sees you, there's, like... It's like seeing this beautiful, radiant thing. And he's just like, oh, th- thank you, sir. Um... Oh yes, and he like slides going. Like they've he's seen elves before, but it's always like a striking thing. And he'll take the coin and be like, oh yes, and he'll hand over a set of keys. It's two keys. Um, he'll hand them over to you both and just say like, yes, the, uh, the common room. It's upstairs. Um, there's uh, it, it sleeps four normally. Um, but uh, yes, it's yours for the night, I suppose. Uh, uh, can I get you anything else? Would you like a meal, drinks, anything else? They have it sent up for you if you like. Some drinks sent up would be. Oh yes, yes, of course. It's just a few more coppers, uh, uh, just uh, uh, three coppers for that. Yes, I will. Sure. I don't one silver. Finish. One silver <laughs> equals ten. So, uh, yeah. ten copper. Um, yeah, he will. He will kind of get that all ready for you. Meanwhile, sort of like the conversation has kind of been going on. Um, the two hobbits. Um, <laughs> and in fact, actually, are not. <laughs> Morin as well. At this point, I now know the name of every single leech that. Um, wow. That Bongo sure, has. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Um, can the three of you make a performance check for oh, performance? Yeah, music performance check. Just to see if you recognise, because a song. Um, there is a, a singer who starts singing a oh, song. Huge. I just want to see if you, you recognise it. Fourteen. Fourteen. Thirteen. Seven. Seven. Thirteen. 13. Um, so every. So so Grundle, you, you're not really a song guy. You just you know don't pick up on. It. But I think that um, Bungo and Borin, uh, just saying the name Bungo every time. Um, you guys Bungo, would, Borin, you guys Grundle. would know this song. Um, you see that there's actually a, a hobbit, a musician, a hobbit musician, um, and he's over in the corner of the inn, and he kind of tunes up a little lyre, um, and he's like, bing, 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 kind of tunes it up, and then he starts singing um, a kind of common. It's actually, it, originally, it's a Hobbit kind of like little walking song, but Boren, you know that there's a dwarven oh, version of it. Slightly you. different. <laughs> not that. <laughs> I want it to be that now, but I'm not. Because I, I wrote things. Um, hey now. Hey now. Um, but no, you would know that it would be slight, the, the lyrics would be slightly different. Um, yeah. Just for the first, the chorus is the same, but the verse is different, mm-hmm. like the first verse. But the, the Hobbit sings the Hobbit version of this. Mm-hmm. Um, and you just hear a, a little kind of like thing, thing. It's just like, Harfoots who planted and store folk who plowed, bread to endure, slow but sure. Fallow hide blood in your veins makes you proud. Sturdy and steady we stand. True to our aim to stay the same. Now and for always, and this is the bit you know, Boren, as it kind of kind of kicks in. Sit by the firelight's glow. Tell us an old tale we know. Tell of adventure strange and rare, never to change, ever to share. Stories we tell will cast their spell. Now and for always, and it kind of goes into like a rhyme and kind of things like that. And um, the two of you, if you want, you can join in. Yeah. Uh, if you join in, you both gain inspiration. Oh. Uh, so hey now. Is like, <laughs> <laughs> I've got no idea what the song is, so I'm just joining in on the last yeah, 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 like, line. Now nah, for all. Yeah. 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 Uh, but yeah. As well, with my uh, flagon of ale, I'd be like, uh, sw- you know, like yeah, swinging yeah, the flagon. Are yeah. people in the place? Are they all looking at that and dancing or singing? Yeah. Along so and stuff? Uh, I would. There's. There's. Uh, I would say, make a perception check for me. Uh, see what you pick up on. Um, uh, as, a, as a point, by the way, that song is from the Lord of the Rings musical. Cool! Oh, 15. 15. Most people, any of the common folk here, are absolutely, as soon as like everybody starts singing as well, and you can see that a couple of the, you know, the folk from Bree, the men of Bree, they're called, um, they sing it as well. They, again, know a different verse, like the, the specific first verse was very Hobbit specific, but they join in on the chorus. Everybody's having a good time, drinks are being clinked and cheered, and people are eating food and singing along. Um, but you definitely notice that there is still a group um, maybe less of them now. In fact, you're almost certain there were eight of them. There's now only about four or five um, of those rougher-looking brigands. And they're watching the two of you and the three of them very closely. Um, but you notice that, yeah, three, maybe four of them have vanished. Um, they've slipped out in the commotion of the song and you guys mm. going up and buying the room. 
I'm maybe looking best at myself for in you. the reflection of my helmet. Maybe <laughs> beautiful, <laughs> stunning. Hmm? Maybe best for you to uh, get the attention of the hobbits oh. rather than the, the dwarf. I'm assuming. I will get the dwarf, and we shall meet upstairs, away from this. Ten degree head tilt to the right. No. <laughs> <laughs> Always a perfect ten yeah. degrees. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, I will drift to uh, the rabble. We're saying. Like, Me and you have a um, wonderful start to the adventure. Yeah, you could probably, yes. actually, you would probably Mr. be able to Bowen. grab Grundle's attention better because these two are currently singing in the song, but Grundle's, like, only able to, like, half join in. Uh, so he's probably the easier one to, like, grab the attention of. Uh, well. Elven hips stand next to your head. <laughs> Armoured. Chunky. <laughs> <laughs> a shaky turn. Who are you? Have you been summoned by the Great Pilgrim? Pilgrim? Uh... There was a big man who knows magic. <laughs> Gandalf. Bring you talking the, Gandalf? Bring the other two. The other two? Here is a key. Oh, you're talking about the dwarf and, um... Gr- Make haste. Grungo. <laughs> you're Grundle. I place no, the bun- key bungo. into his breast pocket. Oh! <laughs> well, thank you. Meet us upstairs at once. Upstairs? What room? We are being watched. What number? You'll, you'll know the one. I will, I'll have to try it's every door. It's on the key. It's on the key. Oh, it is. Three. I dis- I've already disappeared. Hang on. You said three out loud? Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Anyway, carry on. Right, see you in room three. <laughs> no, I don't say that. I'm rubbing my elvish You did eyebrows. say three out loud, but you did do, <laughs> I'll see you in room three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, um, really, yeah. secret, yeah. I've disappeared. Yeah, so at this point, yeah. Where'd you go? Um, uh, Don't go! So, I, just because I want to use it as an example, because uh, this is a great mechanical teaching moment, right? Um, so, Chris Trot, you are playing an elf. You're playing one of the fair folk, yeah. right? You have an ability, you have a special ability called uh, Elven Skill, I believe. Mm. Two and uses. Two uses. I'm not going to count this as one of the uses. Well, I'm going to say it is one of those uses, but you're just going to get it back straight Tutorial. Away. Tutorial. Um, you have the... So, in this game, there are things called magical successes. If you have a magical object, or if you have a particularly magical nature, like elves do, sometimes when you make skills, uh, skill rolls, you can make them magical successes. And what this means is you can do things that are not normally possible. Like, these are literally... Almost like you've used a magic spell to achieve it. So think about Legolas walking along the t- on top of the snow mm. in Lord of the Rings, right? Mm. Or um, uh, you know, Gandalf's fireworks are actually kind of almost magical because of the way they work. Like a normal firework can do the things his firework do, but things. As an elf, uh, I- I- Ilvasar has the ability to twice per day make a skill that he's proficient in a magical success. So in this case, we're going to say that your stealth check almost, even if you're not proficient, I'm just going to count this as a thing, you're almost using that magical success where you almost look like you just vanish out of thin air. Like you you, you hide so well, it's like you become invisible. Um, so that's like kind of like a concept of things like that that can work. Now, like uh, for example, like with a dwarf, for example, it would probably be more like if you found like uh, if you were exploring, say, a cave, and you made like a, an investigation check and you and you rolled a nat twenty or something like that, you would find like an, an invisible door, like a door that nobody could ever find. You would be like, oh, there's a door there because I know the stone, I can feel the stone, and blah blah blah. It would be like part of your dwarven nature. Can right? Anyone else hear drums? <laughs> drums. In, drums in the in deep. deep. Um, <laughs> But yeah, so just as a little tutorial on that one as well. Cool. I uh, go to the base of the stairs, mm-hmm. I put down a shield, I stand on it. Fling <laughs> 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 into a guy's neck. Like playing it in reverse. <laughs> I go up the stairs. <laughs> it plays that sound as well. <laughs> Amazing. Um, all right, so uh, you, uh, Raniel and, and Ilvatar are going to head up to the room and you're waiting for the rest of the company. So I imagine that Raniel's what, already there. Or, or I, does Raniel want to do something else? I kind of wanted to yeah. uh, go past the table mm-hmm. and say to Boren, just upstairs, room three, but say it really quiet, sure. like, like, and then, but use it as, as, if, as if I'm going back to my table. Okay. And then I will sure. sit back down with my drink as sure. if I'm not sure. going upstairs. Yeah, I mean, and like, just I'm wait. Not, you don't even need to make a roll. Like, this is 100% what you can do and, as a ranger and as, yeah. a, as a character. Basically, I want to keep an eye on the people who are watching us sure. to wait for them to make a move. Sure. That charming young lady just told me to go upstairs now. 
Do you want to make an insight check for Boren to see if like how how Boren picks up on that, or do you want to just play this one on on role? It wasn't play? in a nice way, just for right for the record. He likes that. Uh, 13 That's for right. insight. Uh, you would definitely, you can immediately tell. First of all, um, whoever they are obviously knows that you're here, like you were meeting somebody and stuff like You just get this impression. But also, Boren being you know, a dwarf and more connected to the, you know, longer lived and things like that, you would know who the Dunedain and the Rangers of the North are. Mm. You can tell that this lady is a Ranger of the North. And these are like these protectors that go out <laughs> and they fight the enemy, the ancient enemy, which the dwarves aren't too worried about. They're just like, meh, orcs and goblins we care about, but like Sauron's not our problem. Yeah. Um, but you would still know who they are and you would mm -hmm. still recognize Iraniel as a Ranger, uh, as somebody to be maybe a bit mistrusted, but also somebody who is formidable. Like, this is not somebody who's mucking around. Mm. So, so um, <clears throat> would I have picked up on any of the kind of... Um, I was just thinking, like, because I'm a jeweler, I, I'm covered mm -hmm. in gems, mm -hmm. and I'm always traveling with jewels and rich sure. stuff on it. Would I notice, like, the kind of unsightly element that might be trying to rob me? Make a perception check. Let's find out. Twelve. Twelve. I'm rolling some mids today. I'll roll, uh, I'll roll stealth form. See how stealth they're being. No, no, yeah, they're back. Um, everybody pretty much at this point, yeah, I'd say maybe, maybe not the whole thing. The entire bar. Yeah. <laughs> um, everybody in this I end. think that like, even like Barnabas might even sort of like come over and just be like, oh, just be careful. We've got we've got some rough lot in tonight. Um, and then yeah, you immediately become aware that yeah, yeah. there's some, there's some uh, I, I'd say that they, I rolled a one on their right. stealth. <laughs> so at this point, the, the five who don't are here. Don't be suspicious. Don't, don't be suspicious. suspicious. Now the five <laughs> Five of them over here. Maybe like one of them like goes to get out of his chair and it makes a loud scrape. And then as you look over, they That's just mock him. They're going to murder you. <laughs> <laughs> There's scars down their face. You can see like brands, like sealed metal, kind of like hot um, flesh burn marks. Um, you can see their clothing is dirty and ragged. They look grim. They look hardened, and they are just like they look at you. They catch eyes with you, Boren, and sneer. And then they kind of go back to what they were doing. But they are definitely keeping an eye on you. I think uh, after getting the key, sure. uh, and if I spot this element as well, yeah. I, I'm like holding the key. I just said, oh, three. Uh, I'll sort of open my vest, put it inside, and then uh, I'm, uh, I guess on the other side is of like this place from you guys who went off to celebrate. So I'm like trying to duck. I mean, you're kind of like, with them, but you were just yeah. like, in, you weren't joining in, do you yeah, know what yeah. I mean? Uh, but I'm trying to like duck around people to get to you guys sure. uh, to, to, well, inform you. I sure. suppose, sure. not knowing that you've just been. Uh, you don't yourself. even need to roll flat. You can yeah. absolutely do it. You're a hobbit. You can easily like read through. Hey, I, I got a key from an elf. Elf? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Tall, beautiful he was. Was he? No, yeah, he dropped his key. He always thinks the elf's beautiful. <laughs> We're going into room three. <laughs> oh, three. Are, we going, are we going now? Why? Well, he told me to go upstairs and meet him. Oh, and another one. He said there was another one. I think. I can't remember. <laughs> The, the, the cloaked figure. Ah, uh, yes, right. a, a, a lady came up to me and said, upstairs, now. No kidding. Oh, that's what she said. The lady's in the corner, like, close to bashing her head on the table in frustration. <laughs> <laughs> not gone upstairs! <laughs> I'm just gonna, so what I'm gonna do... It's not been that long, it's, think, been, it's, it's not too long. I think looking around and assessing the uh -huh. cutthroats and the thing, I'm just gonna try, try and be subtle about it mm -hmm. and accidentally spill some of my drink on you. Uh, oh, it's already got you! <laughs> On on grand grandeur. Oh, you got tricks. Oh, my dear fellow, I appear to have spilled some alcohol on your top. Let's go get you upstairs and get you Who changed, you shall we? Like that? Just get upstairs. Right, right, yeah. Play it along, bastard. Uh, <laughs> I have some spare clothes I can help. Oh, I'm sorry, with that. I'm clumsy, clumsy when I'm in my cups. Upstairs, then. Yeah. Okay. All right, really you guys. Oh wait. You guys make your way there. Um, Araniel, you can quickly and closely follow behind them as they make their way up. And yeah, the three of you enter into a very large, well-fashioned, comfortable-looking in room. There's actually a small table with chairs. Uh, drinks have been laid out, uh, five mugs of ale. Um, there's like a bowl of fruit on the table as well. A little kind of like a bay window that looks out onto the courtyard um, out the front of the inn. Um, the beds here are human-sized beds. So for the hobbits, they're enormous. Like the two of you could easily get in one and, and have plenty of room. Uh, dwarf, even for a dwarf, these would be like big, luxurious, nice beds. I like them big. Yeah. Um, and uh, wardrobes. And it's just well appointed. There's uh, candles. Um, would um, Ilvasar have lit the candles? Or like, or is the room dark when they enter? 
rose petals. <laughs> I'm confident in my ability to secure this room, so I'm going to light the candles because yeah. okay. I want to see their faces. Sure, sure, sure. So all the candles are lit. Are you like sat down or are you like waiting by the door when they come in? Because like, you hear the key go and they, the three, the two hobbits and the dwarf step in. I've um, put my helmet. Sorry, I just spat. <laughs> sorry, I do that all the time. <laughs> I'm going to put my helmet by the door again yeah. and I'm going to sit at the far end and look at. Round so you almost like round like a little corner, like this tucked behind, coming in. <laughs> tucked behind like a little wardrobe. You're like gleaming at it. Mm. Um, all right, so you guys will step in, and initially you don't see anything, and then you see this elven figure kind of stand up, uh, tall, uh, powerful, muscular, um, a, a resplendent warrior, like something out of a myth and legend. Um, and then as you enter, behind you, uh, another figure comes in and probably shuts the door. I imagine everyone shut the door, lock it, and just extinguish all the candles in the room. <laughs> Sure. Um, so these two figures kind of come in, and uh, again, yeah, this, but this one, this woman that comes in, like the elf is this heroic, resplendent looking soldier, gleaming armor. The woman is dressed in like this dark, dirty, ratty looking cloak, a long, dark hair that looks a bit disheveled. Do you have like any like scars or anything, do you reckon, on Irania, like on the chin or something? Probably have like maybe a scar that goes like across her eyebrow, across her eye and stuff. like just narrowly missing her eye. Yeah. Like, doesn't. Sweet. Doesn't look much nicer than the the bandits and stuff like that. It kind of almost has that kind of rough and ready look, like the same as them. But there's less of a a grimness in the eyes. Like the eyes are a little bit softer, um, but definitely a, a, a rather imposing figure. Um, if one were to enter, um, and yeah, the 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 company assembles up in the common room. Uh, where, where where are you? I'm addressing the human. Uh, where were you approached by uh, by a man? An old man? A very old man? Yes, I think we all know why we're here. Okay, okay, good. Just making sure you... Oh. So everyone, then. Bless my stars, what have we got here, then? What have we got here, then? An elf? Uh, please keep your <coughs> voice down. Wolf? Sorry, sorry. Inside I trust voice. you saw that the this establishment is home to a few unkind-looking souls. Yeah, you got an elf. We're going to need to, to nip that in the bud because we have I to go I haven't said together. anything. <laughs> no. Tis the dwarf that spoke up. You've just been glaring. I changed my voice. <laughs> <laughs> I went home it for a minute. He's, he's, he's so angry, Boren's voice has changed. <laughs> you got some puppet blood in you. <laughs> a little bit, maybe. <laughs> I don't know what happened on that adventure with <laughs> Bill Bowbaggins. <laughs> Time is pressing. Iraniel, I assume you've been assigned as leader of this cohort. Yes. We have to go to Sandford in the south. South Stanford? Sandford. Oh. In fact, Iraniel, if you'd like, you can lay out your map. Oh, uh, I have a map. Ir Iraniel, uh, which is this map, in fact, and I can point out that uh, we have the village of Bree here. Uh -huh. um, and what you can, you this is your map. You have to look at it and no, you tell me. So. Where's Sandford? Yeah, that's a great question. So. So Bree is here. Okay, so we need to go down to here. By the river. Fall back. The river. Oh, I'm not seconds. sorry, Trance. That's right. Just so we're going in. from here. <coughs> He's trying. I'll let you catch up. <laughs> yeah, so it's I can't reach any further, Tom. It's <laughs> it's not a problem of the map, it's a problem of my finger cannot go that far. Um, so here. Down of to here. <laughs> so many fingers. Bree. Uh, as the crow flies. Well, not too yes. far. As then. the eagles fly, wouldn't that be easy? How far, how far is that? But, uh, <laughs> well, if you'd like to know that, we can use one of the new skills. Oh! oh this, new which skill. is the travel no skill. skill. <laughs> so anybody who has it can make a travel roll, which I is have a skill. It. Yep. When you uh, say have wisdom, it, do you mean profi oh, oh, you, anybody can make the roll? But like, if you're not proficient <clears throat> in it, then that's uh, a natural it, one. I have a minus. I got a plus I two. two. I got a plus two. Sure, anybody can make a roll. No, no. I roll a natural one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, yes. wait, 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 wait. <laughs> wait. Three. Oh, you roll three. a natural I get one. Two. Yes, <laughs> we're and back, like, baby. We're back, Jinx. And Tom rolled that one as well. What the hell? What is happening? Is that, is that Baldur's Gate three cards? They what have you done? Neil sat here. What have you done? Yes. Um, 
<laughs> well, yes. I mean, that in that case, I would say that right. How many? Knew. Because I think like I had you guys roll. I think I that know. like where like, are we going? I like don't know. you guys, Iraniel, Iraniel would normally know. <laughs> Sure, normally. Oh, I think, well, oh, no, okay. I maybe this. you're peeved no, no, right no, no, now. No, no, no. no. <laughs> I know exactly annoying. what this is. So, Raniel, you know that normally the journey would take you about. <laughs> I know it would six, take me. But it would take you about six to eight days. Okay. However, you have noticed, and this, all of those three nat ones are now going to culminate in a complication. I'm going to add to the adventure. Oh, no. The it's weather. Important. Has been turning. Over the oh. So you know, Iraniel, that a terrible weather front is coming in, and that might heavily adjust that travel time. Like it could be a week. You could be out there for two weeks if the if the weather is really bad. Um, so you're not exactly sure how long this is going to take. How did Baggins do it? Badly. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. Basically, yes. I mean, they, as, and those of you who know the two hobbits and, and Boren, you both know the story of the hobbit. It would have been told to you a million times. Um, you know that their journey had lots of complications, many of which were not anticipated. Um, uh, and in fact, in the, the, the you, you know, um, elves uh, and Iraniel, you would know law, you know stories and legends of, say, <laughs> Beren, who was a famous human warrior, and and and, uh, and uh, Tenuviel. They had journeys that had complications as well. It's not uncommon for things to go wrong. This but the bad way. weather is a sign that it is not a good omen. It's an ill omen. In fact, as the the nighttime hits, perhaps we start to hear the pitter patter of just gentle rain, mm. kind of on the rooftops. Um, but yes, so you know it's it, it would normally take you about six to eight days. Um, uh, make a... No, I'm just going to say that those of you who live nearby... You've never been out of the Shrine before, you said. Never. Um, I take one more step. Barin, this is not your kind of area, but I would say... Too flat. Uh, Ilvasar uh, and Iraniel, you would both know that looking at uh, your maps, Iraniel, um, you, the most obvious way is to head south on the Greenway. Um, this brings you close to... Get off the road! This brings you close to a place called the Barrow Downs. Okay. Uh, anybody can make an old lore check mm. for me. Oh, oh I, um, I, uh, Anybody can make it. 17. I have a plus two bonus to that. <laughs> <laughs> that is a 12. Plus zero. You uh, plus zero. did you add your extra plus two because this is uh, you have a thing called folklore, your ability called. Oh, folklore. I have thirteen. Um, uh, fifteen. 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 What did you get? Thirteen. We both got and 13. seventeen. Seventeen. Yeah. Seventeen. What did you get? Thirteen as well. Thirteen. Yeah. And we both got. Um, so uh, Borin and uh, Ilvasar, um, you would both know um, a little bit about. Ooh, handout. Yeah, oh, I love a handout. In fact, I'm gonna give. I'm gonna give that one to the elf. Let's do it, elf. And then this is gonna be yours. You know this about the Greenway. Cool, cool, cool. But this is convey it in your like you know it, one of the things the law rings is how many times is like a character suddenly gives out this mm. piece of law in their own words, right? So that's why I wanted to like not me just tell you stuff. Mm. So just there then, just down the Greenway, is it? I don't look too far. No, it looks close. A couple of days, maybe. Wait, where's think? Shire? Where's the Shire running? That would take. Oh, six, it's right there. It would take me about six days. Michael Delving is the big. You walk really slow. It's okay. probably where you're from. Is Michael Delving? So Your how? legs are much smaller than mine. I think it would take you slightly longer. What? what? This would take six to eight days on a good day. Look we'll be walking the, the same pace as you. Don't you worry. Okay, we'll I'll help you do that. Keep up. Don't worry Fine. about us. But sometimes the main road isn't always the best way to travel. No, the the Greenway as well is is been long abandoned and is overgrown. The bridge there has been destroyed, so that could cause some issues to traverse. The dwarf is right. An elf agreeing with me. Not to mention, of course, there is a curse on the place. Oh, the curse! Hang on. On the Greenway, Sorry. you're saying? Um. So Gandalf told me that we were going on an adventure, mm. but he didn't say what kind of adventure? Do we know what is coming? Yeah, what's waiting for what's, us there? What's... The shadows grow. Evil festers. What you once knew of a good life could all come crumbling down. Is there any chance someone else could say that but in a much lighter way? That's pretty much I'm the gist shaking. of the situation. Well, good. good. But our job is to find out what it is. We don't know what's causing it. An investigation? Yes. And I hear that that your kind are good with these kind of things. You're 
We what are your specialties? <clears throat> I, I know the land very well. I'm, I, I can just mention your leeches. I know I've got my leeches. I'm, I'm good at, uh, at helping people when they get sick or when they get injured. I'm and you, with the cheese on the face? <coughs> Gee, I wiped it off and ate the rest. You uh, still have well, cheese face. Quite good at hiding. If uh, people are looking for me specifically, then I can hide in the underbrush, you know? It's very handy to know, but do you have any other skills that Gandalf might have thought worthy of this adventure, as you call it? Well, he described me as very bloody eager and merry, I can tell you that much, as it says right here. <laughs> can I... So distinctive of me, you said it was. Chris Drop, can I look inwardly mm -hmm. back at that flashback mm -hmm. and just double-check that wasn't <laughs> someone duping me? No, it was definitely like, Gandalf. this can't be the party. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, Mithrandir works in mysterious ways, man. I believe But so. I think that with that, like, when the Hobbit's speaking, he talks about hiding from the underbrush. And I mean, you would famously know that the, the Shire folk are, they can be undetectable when they want to be. Like, m like men, orcs, goblins, if a Hobbit doesn't wish to be found, and that can be a useful skill. You know, you have scouts and hunters that work for you, that like you will send them out to track a beast or find a pathway and things like that. That could be a very useful skill to have. Then my eyes move towards the dwarf. I'm like, what would Mr. Andir see in such a dwarf? Mm. You tell me, elf. I'm Wait, this is in his head. Mm. This is the I'm in your head. <laughs> That's my I skill. I hear everything you're thinking. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> um, as you guys are having these thoughts and planning these things, you hear a sudden cry. Mm. Uh, and you hear Barnabas like, Go! Oh, the ponies! The ponies! Um, and there's a commotion and you hear the galloping of horses. Um, and you hear this kind of, all this big commotion coming from downstairs. Um, and uh, what, what do you guys do? I am straight to attention, fighting stance. Spear this out. could be the work of those um, degenerates. <laughs> <laughs> I, I uh, am probably running over to the window, ready to get on my knees for Bungo to jump onto my back to look through the to window. To look through the window. Yes, yeah, of course. Okay. <laughs> All right, so in that case, Bungo, um, yeah, you, you, you look out and you can see men with torches are chasing after a bunch of ponies from the stables attached to the inn. And just in the, the fading dim light, there is the moon and stars, so you can just about see all of the ponies are scattering. Like somebody has let, or, or they've gotten out of the stables um, and they're running like away. Can I see if it looks like a, like a break? Like if it's if something's broken and they've gotten out, or if it's just been sure. It's going to be pretty difficult because it's at night yeah. and at a distance. Um, so this would be a perception check, but a disadvantage. I'm going right. to say. Can I add my oh. rhymes of law bonus action? You can that? give that to yourself. Yeah, technically it's an ability check. Um, I'm also going to introduce and, and don't forget you've oh, got, inspiration got inspiration as well. So I'll just use that. You, okay, that makes it a normal roll. Um, and then you can add the d6 from your rhymes of law as well. Inspiration uh, is, gives you advantage, so it will cancel okay, out the we'll disadvantage. Yeah. Do you? Yes, you got it from listening to the song. Yes, yeah, of course, yeah. Nat 20. Uh, what do you see, Bungo? Swings. Big swings. So, Bungo. Oh, but I see. It's maybe Face it's because. <laughs> I mean, you tell me, like, is it because, like, Bungo has, like, cared for animals? And so immediately you're, you're not, like, everyone's looking at the horses, like, running off and people chasing after them. Yeah, but are Bungo you drawn looks, to, like, the stable? I look to the stable, mm. yeah. And just look for any like broken locks or I like. I think with that Nat 20, yeah. So the first thing you notice is that, yeah, the gate, you look at the gate, and this is a well made human gate. Like, there's no way it just broke. You know that. You can look at it and you can see how well it's constructed. You're like, there's no way that would just normally break. Um, and then you see it like something is like a, like a nick in the wood and you barely can see it in the dim light. It's just as um, the old door, the old gatekeeper, oh, a couple of hobbits. Uh, you see this kind of old man passing by and his lantern just happens to pass over a bit of the stable and you see this like long cut that everybody else is missing. Um, and it's like an ax has like cut at the wood and broken a piece of it. And with that nat 20, I'm also going to say you also catch a figure. One of those brigands, like one of the ones that slipped away, one of the cutthroats from downstairs, you see them like lurking near in the stables and then sliding away um, out, out of the town, basically. But you just catch that. But yeah, you, you think this was an act of sabotage. You don't think this was just the ponies got out on their own. Sabotage is afoot! It's uh, one, of the, one of the weasley looking men. We're in the stable, there's been a cut through the door! Can I open Sabotage. the door and listen in the hallway? Sure. Outside our door. Uh, as you go to open that doorway, 
mm. you press it open, you don't need to make a listen check because you yeah. you suddenly surprise because they weren't expecting you to come out. Um, as you open the doorway, yeah. there is a figure looming in the dark with a brandish knife ready to like open the door and you press into them. So um, my my thought in doing this was sure. it's sabotage it, it's sabotage, that's a distraction. Someone's coming for us. You open so that door. Blades. I feel like I would be prepared for sure. And in fact because of that, you guys aren't gonna be surprised when we roll initiative. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We're gonna do that after a five minute break. Oh, 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 God. God. Yeah. You did this. <laughs> Cool. So yeah, uh, we're going to take a five minute break here, everybody. Go and get, have, get yourself a little beverage. Get yourself some Lemvers bread. <laughs> um, and join us after the break as we continue our little adventure here in Middle Earth in the Lord of the Rings role playing game. Yeah. See you then. Bye. Bye. See you then.
boom, bam. Hello, welcome back uh, to High Rollers. We're here for more uh, Lord of the Rings. We're playing uh, the Lord of the Rings role playing. It's a fifth edition Middle Earth adventure by Free League. Um, we're playing that as uh, as we build up towards campaign three of our main D and D campaign. We're trying to get there, so we're going to be doing these like little mini series, little one shots, two shots kind of thing um, as we get there. Uh, also, as a brief other brief mention, thank you to today's sponsor, Moonlight Maps for their plain terrain. Oh, yeah. Kickstarter coming October 10th. Make sure you click the link in chat to go and follow that Kickstarter yes. for when it goes live. Oh, look at all these different terrain packs that you can pick from. Beautiful. Just easy to throw down some, you know, throw down a map, put some terrain on it. It looks good. It looks great. Uh, I wish I had more of them ready for what we're about to do. Uh, but I've only got the one to show you. I've only got Tundra, and sadly, we're not. A wagon. Nice. I need a wagon. Nope. Okay. Um, but yeah. Uh, so thank you very much uh, to Moonlight Mouse for the episode. We are now back as we return to the inn of the Prancing Pony in the village of Bree, where our company have formally met uh, and have discussed their plan, a task set to them by the Grey Pilgrim himself, Gandalf the Grey, uh, who has asked them to travel south to a place called Sandford um, uh, to meet with rangers of uh, uh, rangers who might know what secret what shadows might be growing in the land. Um, but whilst they are conversing about this plan in the common room of the Inn of the Prancing Pony, uh, it seems that they've been ambushed or attempted to be ambushed by some brigands and cutthroats. But thanks to uh, not only uh, Bungo's great detective work, uh, Bungo Grubbs, uh, the hobbit of the Shire, uh, great detective work in, in noticing that this was a ploy, a shenanigans, in fact. <laughs> sabotage! A sabotage. Um, and uh, well, Owl, if I wasn't your step. True, Grendel was my step. That's true, Grendel was the step. Uh, and then we have Eraniel, a ranger, heir of the Dúnedain, uh, who opened the door fearing that this would would be a distraction and an ambush was uh, incoming and indeed the foresight has proven true as a number of ruffians await in the corridor. Ruffians and thanks. At this point I'm going to introduce a little mechanic before we get started. Now the company has met. Hey. The company has met and you've all met each other and the, this game there is a thing called Fellowship points. Oh. Okay. Fellowship points. Um, so you get one fellowship point for each member of the company. That's five. Pretty good. But you also have Gandalf as your patron, and Gandalf gives you an extra two oh. fellowship oh. points. Uh, seven. Seven. Um, so you have seven fellowship points. This is a group resource that you all share. Okay. And you can spend a fellowship point at any point to give yourself advantage on an ability check, attack roll, or saving throw. So it's like an inspiration point, right? Very cool. Okay. So you can spend it, but you remember you have to spend it before you roll. Yeah. Uh, to give yourself advantage on an attack roll, ability check, or saving throw. And when do these uh, do these ever refresh? Uh, they do. They only refresh on something called the fellowship phase, which is basically um, after you do your adventure, you will go into the fellowship phase, which can take like a longer period of time. So it can go over months or even years of like downtime effectively, right. and you get them all back then. Okay. Um, and that represents the longer breaks between your adventures and things like that that happen. Um, so yes. And okay. is that individual, like so seven, it's not a pooled resource? No, it seven is, it, is no seven as a group. So like, and you can choose to spend them, like you just you spend them as you want to, but it is a group resource. You have seven to share amongst you. Right, and so, so if I spend it, it then goes you down for six. everyone. Yeah, yeah cool. it goes down for everyone, all right? Uh, but apart from that, it is going to be using regular 5e rules. And that means that as we are in a fight, we roll initiative. <coughs> okay. Is that a one? Yeah. Again. Are you kidding <laughs> went from 121. Oh, yeah. Oh, the dichotomy of the game. Ah, classic. Uh, so where is my initiative? Oh, 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 I'm I good. I'm right. You've rolled enough ones for us all, thank you. <laughs> Your curse is back. Like... Get them I mean, all out. The all right. Campaign. True, yeah. Borin, oh. son of Dolly. Initiative, please. Fifteen. Fifteen. Bungo Grubs of the Shire. Three. You only have plus two. Yeah. Uh, Grundle Boffin of the Shire. Uh, I got a nine. Ilvisar, Elven Champion. Also a nine. A nine. But you will be going before Grundle. I've got 14 decks. Uh, I have oh, 18 decks. In, in that case, Grundle is going first. 
He's what? Quick, you didn't quick ask me. Faster than an elf. Oh, oh is. no, as in, no, not as in going first, as in going first between the two, oh. is what I meant. Um, and then Iraniel. 16. 16. Wonderful. Quit flighty little bug me. <laughs> Nippy little yes. bug. Uh, 16, did you say? <laughs> All right. Uh, you are indeed going to be going first, Iraniel. So having swung open the door, anticipating uh, these foes, hand on the grip of your blade. Uh, yes, my special my special weapon. Um, I will be using that great weapon style, both hands. Oh. And I will be taking a swing at whatever Would you like to know what you see? Yeah, actually, I guess, I guess. Uh, We don't have a map, so what we're going to do is this is going to, you're going to have to think through the mind this one. Sure. Um, but imagine that you are this large common room. The common room is going to be one zone. Think of the common room. You can move and attack anybody That's in the common room. Are. That's where you guys currently are. Iraniel is going to be moving into the corridor as part of this kind of opening the door. Where the thing. baddies are. Sure. You have a corridor. That's like the next zone. So moving between the two is one movement action, right? Mm -hmm. And then there's stairs that lead down. Uh, Irania, what you see is there are uh, three ruffians that are in the corridor, basically around the door. Um, one of them uh, looks to be uh, a man with an eye patch and a scar, looks a little bit more toughened, maybe is kind of the one calling the shots here, you think. Um, but you do see that coming up the stairs, you can hear more footsteps, as if they were you know, maybe on their way to support their allies. But you see at least three out in this corridor now. Um, I will attack with my sword, the big boy. Okay. Please. Uh, absolutely. Um, so you move out into the corridor. Uh, this is narrow, so there's only only two wide can stand in the corridor. Basically, it's about uh, you know just enough for two medium-sized creatures to stand side side by side. It's not like right at the door. So one of them is at right at the door, and then there's two more. The 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 leader, okay. the ruffian leader, is actually a bit behind. He's like coordinating them. So okay. the two that you've encountered looks like just a, a random thug. Basically. So in my head. Uh huh. I've opened the door and he's right there. Yeah, and like, they right look like there. they were reaching for the door. So and you're, I'm probably still you in, want to the stay room, in the common room. Okay. But sure. I'm just going to get the, the one that was closest to me that was about to attack. I'm going to just hit the one that's closest sure, to me. Sure, sure, sure. Okay. So. We are playing at level two, by the way. Level two. Dogs. I don't know if that's a six or a nine. It's two and elvish. That's a I really know. good question. Dove. I have an 11. I that was okay. an assignment I had for a... Um, that's cool. That's awesome. That's only a 12. <laughs> a 12 to hit will still be enough. These okay. ruffians only wear sort of like loose, loose bandit re-clothing. They're not particularly armoured. Um, uh, I rolled a 10 on my d10, so 14 damage. Oh, God. Well, <laughs> with a swipe, you watch as the blade cuts through. Um, those of you who see it, uh, for most of you, I think Borin, uh, and Ilvasar, certainly. Uh, the two of you, the hobbits, this would mean nothing to you. It just looks like an impressive, you know, pretty sword. Oh. Borin. Beautiful. You would recognize this sword as exquisite work. Mm. This is fine craftsmanship. It is elven craftsmanship, but that doesn't ca that 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 would still <laughs> even you, even with your hatred of the elven fair folk, like I appreciate uh, the, the craft is, yeah. is exceptional. For Ilvasar. This is no ordinary blade. This is a blade forged by elven smiths long ago that uh, this ranger carries. As you see this gleaming, almost glittering blade, like starlight cuts through the air. Only to your eyes, to the rest of the people, it's just this swift blow. The man just <coughs> stumbles back, <coughs> dead. Um, wow. <laughs> my eyes widen two millimeters wider. Specifically. Yeah. Uh, he just touches his, uh, uh, and you, you just hear uh, one of the, the ruffians is just like, get up here, get up here now, uh, stick in that nose where they don't belong, kill them. Um, uh, anything else on your turn, Irania? Uh, just to say to people, prepare yourselves. Okay, now you are currently blocking the doorway. I'll slightly sidestep. Get Wait, back the, into the room, or do you want to go into the corridor? Is the person... I will back into the room. The guy you just room. killed is completely yeah. dead, so there's nobody so in front of I you. So I will... 100% dead. 
back up slightly to allow um, Ilvisar. Ilvisar to mm -hmm. be able to also in. be in battle because sure. I think that she would know that she's kind of in the way at the moment and she wants him sure. to be involved. All right. Um, okay, so you do that. You kind of take a few steps back, readying the blade. I think I'll probably place myself, myself naturally in front of one of the hobbits. We are the opposite side of the room. They are by the window. I'll window. just stand yeah. in their line of sight, probably, yep. so that the person coming through the door... You are, like, right in the yeah, 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 yeah. It's the idea that you form a gap right. and you step outside. All they can see is a hobbit on his knees, one on their back, <laughs> looking over like... <laughs> so you, you, you hear uh, <laughs> this, uh, this ruffian, this kind of... the one who seems to be a bit more of the leader, just like... Don't worry about the innkeeper. Burn him out, smoke him out. And he will move up, it's his turn's next. He's gonna move up and you can see he's been carrying like an oil lantern. Mm -hmm. um, and he is gonna look in and he's gonna throw it into the room. Ah. Wow. Uh, you watch as the oil lantern flies through the air. It doesn't hit anybody, it doesn't land close enough to any of you, but as it lands, the oil and the, the wick kind of hit and the you watch as one of the empty beds is quickly set alight as the room begins to burn, uh, as this flame and you just see he pulls out a wicked knife um, and he just kind of took it, took a, you know, stepped in it close enough to throw this thing and then he kind of pulls himself back into the shadows and he's like, go on, get in there and kill him. The rest of you, get up here. And then he kind of steps back a little bit and he's going to linger back for a second. Um, that is the ruffian leader's go. Wow. Um, How rude. Uh, Bolin. So you've written on my sheet that I have sneak attack. Yes. It's been a very long time since I played a rogue, and even then I really did yep. rogue it. So <laughs> it, it works slightly different than this because some of the restrictions from 5e are being taken out. With this, you basically need to have advantage on the attack roll mm -hmm. or have an ally within 5 feet. So if I move up to the nearest rude dude, mm -hmm. would I have an ally? No, because they are all out in the corridor at the moment. None of them have stepped into the room. But you could spend a fellowship point, which would give you advantage on the attack mm -hmm. roll. Can I ready actions in this? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So could I ready an action that when someone steps moves into in this to like room, engage with you know either Araniel or or, yeah. or uh, Ilvasar, you could step in and take a swing. Yeah. Yeah, and I want a sneak attack swing. Yeah, sure. Ah. Yeah, I mean sneak attack just goes off if you hit in the conditions are met. You don't need to specifically yeah, yeah, be like yeah. I'm going to use sneak attack. Um, but yeah, you absolutely um, can do that. So, so you're I, gonna you kind of what you pull out. You've got like a what weapon do you use? It just it's an axe. Sword. Oh yeah, but you I have feel a sword. Like yeah. An axe would be... Well, no, dwarves use swords. If you remember the Hobbit, like Philly and Killy and that. Have oh, swords yeah. and Thorin uses a sword. If you want an axe, yeah. Sure, sure, sure. You can, you can. We can say it's an axe. You just use the it's same stats. The same, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, could I actually? Could I position myself by the door and like almost like move to trip up whoever comes in next? You can absolutely try like, and do so that. That would be your action, action instead. Yeah, yeah. So hold an action to just trip try and trip them somebody up. up. Like use my axe. Yeah, you use the yeah. haft of it. Like poof, knock their no, legs as they run in. Again. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you're, you're <laughs> aiming more to like trip them up rather than make an attack roll. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah all right. So that's what I would like to do. Okay, sure. Um, in that case, uh, all right, you ready yourself to do that. So that is Boren's go. Um, one of the ruffians is going to do the one by the door, um, is going to do precisely that. Like after the leader kind of calls out to them, they are going to uh, step in um, and they're going to get a thing. I'm going to make a dexterity saving throw for them. Um, I'm going to base it on rather than a DC, why don't you give me a. This would probably be athletics, unfortunately, because it's using your strength. Uh, or acrobatics. Minus one for a dwarf. Yeah. Why I mean, am I just, not strong for well, a dwarf? Well, dwarves don't have to be strong. Dwarves are just like other people. You're smart and, and, and I'm charismatic. Dexy. Yeah. I'm Dexy. Yeah, you're quick and nimble, like Philly and Killy and, and you know, yeah. a lot of the other dwarves. So, uh, acrobatics, if you're allowed? I'd say, I'd, I'd say allow acrobatics, yeah. Or a sleight of hand? Mm, no, mm. no. It's, it's, it's stealth? Acrobatics. I'm stealth? No, I'm not no. stealthy. Okay. Oh, okay. That's, is that a one? I rolled natural 20, so. <laughs> oh my god, what's happening? Well. So, the way I'm going to do this is as you go to trip this this bandit, it kind of nimbly sort of leaps over you, um, and he's going to basically like elbow you in the face. I'm going to make yeah. a free like unarmed strike kind of thing. Yeah, um, to try and punch you in the, the face. Yeah. Um, that's going to be a 17 to hit. Um, yeah, that just hits. Just take two points of damage as he kind of like poof, elbows you in the in the nose, um, and he leaps over and he's gonna then take a swing at uh, Iraniel, who is right there with his club. He's got like a long kind of like studded club. Uh, that is only gonna be a nine to hit you though. No. So you parry to the side as this he kind of takes this big swing. Um, 
Death! Kill them quick! Ah! And then you kind of see, and you can see maybe like the flash of some sort of brand on his neck or something like that. Uh, all right, that is that ruffian's go. Uh, we then go to uh, the rest of the ruffians all head up the stairs, and they now filter into the corridor, kind of filling it, blocking the way to the stairs down. Um, so, and if you have like a short, narrow corridor coming out of your room, they're blocking the stairs leading out. So you are effectively trapped in this room now, um, uh, unless you get out into the corridor and fight your way through them. Uh, How many are there now? There would be one, two, three, four, five, and the leader. So there's six of them out in the okay. corridor. Okay. Oh. oh no, one in the room. One. Sorry. Yeah, one in the room. Uh, five in the, the corridor, room. and then the leader. Uh, we then jump to uh, Grundle. Um, you are on your hands and knees in front of the window. Get off, Bongo! Bongo, get off! Ah! <laughs> um, I will. Uh, I think display some Hobbit courage. And I will jump on the back of the one that just elbowed Boren mm -hmm. uh, in an attempt to probably not to attack, but if someone else has an attack against them, maybe so you could use the help action. Yeah. Um, sure. And I'll jump on him, sort of try and just disable him from my guard. You long shanks! <laughs> <laughs> like you're pummeling him with your little fists and like yeah. hitting on his back and slapping his face. Yeah, sure. So this is just gonna be the help action. So He's the next like person to attack, you can give the advantage. <laughs> <to you. laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, and. Uh, like maybe like you could almost like pick up like a candelabra on the side and like bonk him on the head yeah. and then you jump up on him and I've probably got like a pan or something. Yeah. I'll grab a pan off chop bungo as I go. <laughs> yeah, great. Uh, uh, and that's just how I wanna All right, assist. perfect. Yeah, perfect turn for a hobbit, I think. So that's your action. And in fact we then go to Ilvasar. So you kind of you know, readying yourself for this combat, you see this bandit, this thug kind of rush up to around and take the swing. And then out of nowhere, this little hobbit like jumps on his back and he's like pummeling him, shows this like real kind of like spur of courage. Leave him alone! And it actually is distracting the man enough that you would have advantage on your attack if you attack him. I don't think I'm going to attack him. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to back off, mm -hmm. and in the room, is there like a large mirror or a massive wide piece of metal of any kind? Uh, roll a d20 for me. Um, if you get, say, 10 or higher... 19. 19, yeah, I'd say that there is a, it's a large full mirror, full body mirror, basically. Like, uh, it's, it's kind of mother. old and antique, like, okay. you know, it, it's second hand, but, like, absolutely there's something. I'm gonna like try it. and drop that on the bed to smother the oil fire. Okay, sure. Um, yeah, the, it's, it's kind of on the bed and on the floor, but you can try and, like, pile the most of it, at least, like, slow it down, yeah. I think. Uh, give me... No, there's no roll for this because you're just... You put it on the bed. It is definitely going to help stop the spread of fire. It's not going to stop the fire entirely. It doesn't put it all out. It's it's spread out onto the floor. Like, it's on the bedside a little bit as well. But you have smothered it from the bed, which is going to slow it down. It's not going to spread anywhere nearly as quickly. Um, um, I'm going to hop onto the top of that and okay. get my bow out. Okay. <laughs> Ready for the? I uh, assume that was an sure. action, right? Yeah, you probably have like um, you probably have like a, a ring kind of um, kind of holster for the spear, like on your back, like you can kind of slot it in. I flourish that away, yep. <laughs> and a bow comes out of nowhere. It's crazy. It's kind of elegant, like curved horn bow or you be a bow, or knock the bow, uh, knocked an arrow ready. Sure. All right. Tank. Love it. And I also say, we might have to leave via the window. Okay. Uh, I'm going to do a quick reminder as well. Don't forget these are new classes, so you do have abilities. If you do want to know what they do, I've tried to write down quick notes, but if you do are like, oh, what does this do? Just let me know if there is anything that's confusing. Sure. Or, or you don't know. Uh, that was Ilvasar. Uh, so we go to poor old little Bungo. Hello. Um, so at this point, I think I'm still clinging onto the window ledge. Can I try and... <laughs> Hanging from Because <laughs> you jumped out from under me, so I'm like... Ah! Now you rolled out, and so little Bungo's just holding onto the, 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 the can latch. Can I try and open the window? Sure. Um, I mean, you can open the window, yeah, just as, a, as an action. You just kind of fumble the latches. Oh, you kind of open it. It's a good, like, this is on the second floor of the Prancing Pony, so this is like a good, like, 10 to 15 foot drop from here, probably. Um, mm, for us, that's 40 feet. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty far for a hobbit. Um, but you can see, like, you can hear, like, you know, people are still shouting out, calling about these ponies and things like that. Um, but yeah, you can look down. But yeah, action, open up the latches, no problem. There's too many of them, we should probably leave. Uh, would you like to do anything? You've got, like, bonus actions and things like that as well. You do have your uh, rhymes of lore, or you can do anything you like, really. Um, or if you want that to be the end of your turn, that can be the end of your turn. Can I. Hmm. hmm. I think I'm good for the minute. Okay, yeah. all right. In that case, we jump up to the top of brand new round with Iraniel. Uh, I'm gonna get the guy that 
Yeah. Boot me in the snoop. But you're... Yeah. You got yeah. advantage on the attack roll because of uh, old Grundle. Hey, what up? Oh, um, this goes up to hit. Yeah, twenty hits. Yeah, <laughs> sorry, easily three. enough. Uh, as like uh, Grumble out kicks his back, he arches, kind of leaving himself open wide enough for a strike. Uh, nine damage. Nine points of damage. Um, is it, it injures him, but it's not enough to take him out in one blow this time. Uh, as the blade kind of scrapes across his chest, leaving this red mark. Uh, as you cut across it. <laughs> Next turn. Um, um, yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think... You're still in the center of the room right now, so you've got this one guy in front of you. He's badly hurt, but he's still alive. But he's you're in the middle of the room. You can see that at the corridor, they almost look like some of them were like readying actions in case any of you ran out, like some of the ruffians are waiting. Um, but they also look like some of them are like pulling out like uh, like night, like throwing daggers and things like that, things that they can throw into the room or strike from strike from range. Yeah, I was just seeing I don't have in my equipment. You can throw your gonna... hatchet. That would be an extra attack. Count as a... No, it's a no. section. Everything else I think is an action. Yeah, you're in the um, I just wanted to say to you Have you got a rope? A rope? The bed I spreads? Do. Anything? No, I don't. I do. Attach it, climb down. All right. Perfect. All right, in that case, uh, we then go to the ruffian leader. Uh, the ruffian leader is going to use their yell of triumph ability. Like, enough, kill them. They need to be dead. We can't let them travel on the roads. Uh, and you hear, like, uh, the kind of uh, rest of them just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they kind of get all, like, hyped up. Uh, all of the ruffians are going to have advantage on their attack rolls mm. until the next turn. Okay. Um, uh, but that's that's his action to do that. So okay. I can't do anything else. Um, and then a bunch of the ruffians are going to go next. Uh, oh no, it is Boren. You are correct. Sorry, you're at the top of the list, very far away from the other one. So Boren, it is your turn. Uh, can I barrel roll where I fell and got hit in the face and just barrel roll over to the window? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just roly poly your way over. Well, also because you got to stay low because of smoke, you know. Um, you can do because the ruffians have moved up to the door. They are in prime position to get an opportunity attack. You could disengage as your action. Um, so I have fifty foot of rope. So um, what would it be to like? It would be an action to tie off a rope and like throw it out the window and stuff. So either you can do that next turn or you can risk an opportunity attack from one of these ruffians. Mm -hmm. um, can I shut the door? Like You could try to. It's probably going to be strengthy though, and I've got minus one strength. I mean, you can shut the door. It's whether, it, like, it if you don't lock shut. it or, like, hold it closed and you don't have one of the keys. So. Look, I've been playing a lot of Baldur's Gate and shutting that door is an OP move. You can shut, um, you can shut the door, <laughs> you can't lock it, and yeah. if you want to keep them out, you would have to hold it. They can't see me. Uh, I'm going to risk an opportunity attack. It's probably going to hurt like hell, but let's go. Let's see. That is a 15 to hit. Does not hit. Does not hear. That's right, because you have uh, you have a special thing which makes you a bit more nimble. Um, I didn't write that down because there's no need. That's it not just, on this it sheet. Just, it just boosts your AC by one. Um, but yeah, you watch. So you roly poly, very, you know, agile the other way, <laughs> like almost not expecting a dwarf to be this quick. The guy stand, you know, slams down with his big club, misses you completely. Um, as you roly poly your way, uh, you get over to the the window. There's a bed nearby to the window. You begin tying off the rope. That's your action. <laughs> And now, as uh, Bungo had opened it, you can throw the rope out. Yeah. Uh, part of the same action, I'd say, to Good. throw the rope out. Can't climb down at this yeah. time, but... Good, solid, dwarvish knot. Nice, excellent. Yeah, that's my go. Perfect. Uh, in that case, then, after you, a couple more of these ruffians are going to go. So I'm going to have... So this guy... Whoa, this guy is already in the room. Uh, I'm going to have two more of the ruffians enter the room. Um, and they are going to... One is going to come towards you with your bow, uh, Ilvasar. The other one uh, is going to go towards uh, Iraniel, um, and they're going to kind of swarm you. They're kind of ignoring the hobbits right now, um, but they are going to go for the two of you. Um, so uh, with their clubs, uh, that's only a five to hit you, Iraniel. So again, like, ching, ching, kind of parrying them both off, fending them off with your large sword. Um, Ilvasar, uh, this is only an 11 to hit you. So again, like, they take a swing, just nimbly, elven agility kind of, like, bouncing out of the way, unable to fully strike you. Um, the other two are going to remain outside with their leader, but you see them um, pulling out like hatchets, like kind of like, you know, throwing axes and things like that. They're gonna throw one at Bolin, yeah. um, and they're gonna throw uh, one at you on their mate's back. Uh, Good luck if he misses. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> 
I don't seem to mind. Uh, that is going to be a 17 to hit you, Borin. That hits me. Um, rolled very high. And a, a 16 to hit Ooh, you, Grundle. That is going to be uh, four points of damage to you, Grundle. Okay. And that is going to be uh, five points of damage to you, Borin. The axes kind of spin through the air, nicking across your shoulders or like, you know, just scraping along your back. Maybe it digs into your pack, but it's enough to kind of like the force of it kind of knocks some air out of you yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, as it does so. Uh, that is going to be those guys gone. So then we go to Grundle. So, um, current layout of the room is uh, the three outside, including the leader, yeah. door, the two guys that just ran in, and then me on the back of this guy? Yes, yeah, so there's three guys here, but one's heavily injured. The one you're on the back of is heavily, heavily hurt. And then there's two more that have just run in. Yeah. Uh, the far bed near the window has got a rope tied to it that leads out. The bed that Ilvasar is currently stood on, uh, the flame on the bed has been put out, but the side of the room is catching fire, and it's it's been slowed down, but probably next turn that's going to start growing and spreading. Yeah, I almost want to try... Sorry if I'm imagining this incorrectly. No, no, but, um, I almost want to try to push away from this guy that I'm on the back of mm -hmm. uh, enough or in some way to stumble him into the two that have just entered the room uh, enough so that I can get away to the window. Maybe it will stagger them enough for the other guys sure. to get away. I'll give you two ways of doing this. One or is... is one of them. Uh, I'll, I'll give you two ways of doing this. One is a risk for you, but the reward would be that you probably knock two of these guys prone. Okay. But the risk is that you might hurt yourself and these guys might get to swipe at you when they do so. Like, you won't sense. get your disengagement, basically. Yeah. The other one is you can just simply take the disengage action sure, and like, yeah, just yeah. roll away and be, um, be safe. But I, I, then you won't necessarily knock these guys back. And stuff yeah, like no, that. I certainly would like to try to... All right. Uh, so uh, in that case, I'd like you to give me an acrobatics check. Acrobatics. Um, yep. And then this is to see if you're successful in pushing the guy back. This is why I'm very good at I'm going to make an acrobatics check to see if they get a free swipe strike on you. And if you are successful, I'll then see if they fall down. Sure. Okay. So, acrobatics from you. Well, I have a plus eight. Oh, okay. Well, 16. 16. You are successful. You basically, you spin round to the front of the heavily injured guy. You basically, like, kick off of him, like, you know, like an acrobat, like, you know, pushing off something like a kip-off jump, uh, which causes him to stumble back. But as he does, he swings wildly, and that's going to hit you. I rolled a 17. So 17, he's, yeah. He's yeah. Gonna, he swipes you with that, sure. with his club, uh, for another, well, that's another six points of damage, Ooh. I'm afraid. So, okay. You watch as Grundle gets slammed by this club, but the guy goes stumbling back, and I'm going to have him um, clatter into, I'll say one to three, it's the one with uh, fighting Uraniel. It is. So the one fighting you, Uraniel, both of the injured one and this other guy stumble into each other and fall down to the floor prone. So you'll have advantage on any attacks against them. Nice. Um, um, and yeah, I'd like to use the rest of my movement to um, yeah try and get to the window to the rope. Sure. Yeah, uh, yeah absolutely. Do so I can. probably like a bit winded, you're like, oh, like limping over there and stuff. So I think you're, you're probably looking a bit hurt at this point. Quite hurt, yeah. yeah. I'm over half. So, lost, Bongo, so. as you see Grundle comes over to you, like, you can see, like, terrible bruises beginning to form, like, all welt along his side, like, uh, you know, probably, like, oh, bleeding a little bit from his back. He really did. Um, but yeah, you can climb up onto the rope and you start climbing down. You've climbed up ropes and trees, like, this is, you know, you've gone. Oh, so I'm, I'm, With your movement, I'd say you can start making your way down. Sweet, okay, cool. Yeah. Nice. Alrighty. So Grendel is making his way down. You're not off the rope just yet. Uh, nice. Ilvasar. So I've got a person up close right to the bench. Right in front of you, yeah. He's got like his big club and he's like swinging it around. He's got like a knife in one hand, a uh, club in the other. Can I, just for flavor, mm -hmm. uh, take my bow, I'm going to latch it onto his head and kind of jump over and just slam him down to the ground. Sure, I'd say you can do that, yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So, uh, uh, just do, yeah, just make an um, attack as if it's with your uh, bow. Okay. Uh, oh. Actually, no, it'd be a strength-based attack, so attack as if it was your spear. Okay, that's still the same, so it's nine. Nine. Unfortunately, like, you go to hook the bow around this thing, um, and uh, you... Now, don't forget as well, before you roll, you can always spend fellowship points. Like, we're, we're only got a little... Pretty cool, I'm gonna do it. I'm going to spend yeah, the point. Sure, 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 sure. I'll let you re-roll it instead then. Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. a bow DDT. Yeah, yeah. sure. It's so a we got six now. Six, six fellowship points. So re-roll it. I will re-roll. <laughs> Are no. you kidding? That one. Whoa. It's coming round! Right. It's coming It's coming, right. it's coming for you next, Katie. I don't want it. I've already had it. <laughs> no, it's coming again. Um, the next round. The so next can as you go to do this, one. Uh, there is, as you, uh, I know, 
Well, I know exactly why this doesn't work. Because you are a skilled elf. This isn't like Ilvasar is like clumsy or failing or any way. You are this in like 400 year old expert at what you do. As you loop the bow around his neck, you're about to swing it around and pull him. And then the bowstring pulls down his cloak and you see that brand. And it is an orc's bread, an orcish bread. And suddenly in your mind, you see images of the elves, the first elves warring against their mutated kin, the first orcs who were made from elves. And it's almost like the shadow uh, affects you. Can you make a, uh, this is a, so this is the elements of shadow that come into Ooh. play. Um, and this is going to be a element of sorcery. Can you make an intelligent saving throw for me, please, Ilvasar? Natural 20. Natural 20. Yeah, yeah, we do. You are still, it shocks you for a moment, enough Why to cause you the attack to miss, but not enough to corrupt you and give you any shadow points. Um, but you see the mark, and it just throws you off enough where you're like suddenly distracted, and he manages to, and because it was a natural one though, he actually gets his knife and cuts the bowstring, mm. snapping the bowstring. Wow. Oh. Able to be replaced, but not usable My in man. the rest of this fight. Uh, oh. So it kind of snaps the bowstring, and now like you're on your feet. What would you like? Is there anything else you'd like to do? Well, I'm readying my spear just to defend myself. Okay. Um, right. I could bonus action disengage, actually. Yeah, you can also attack with that. So your surge, your surge of action, oh, surge attack, of vigor. Yeah. yeah, surge of vigor allows you to make All right, an attack. I will use action. my surge of vigor to attack him back with my spear. Okay. Uh, Here we go. Well, a big nat twenty. Uh, that's a fifteen. Fifteen still enough to hit though. Okay, cool. One d six plus six. So that's a nine. Nine points of damage. Nine points of um, damage on him. You watch as this one, yeah, this one is enough. His, his hit points are a little bit lower. You watch as this one is killed. Um, as the spear, wow. you kind of catch it. He snaps the bowstring. You land and in this fluid motion, just drop the broken bow and whoosh, the spear comes out. Whoosh, ram it through his chest. Whoosh, pulls out and he stumbles to the floor bleeding. Um, and you see that brand, this, this, this man. Man is no, he's uh, not just a simple brigand. Um, but yeah, easily done, dispatched. Cool. End of turn. Cool AF. Uh, cool AF. Bongo. Yo. <laughs> Bongo. <laughs> Bongo. Anyway, many, here's Bongo. How many are left? <laughs> so we currently have there is uh, one in the room. Oh, sorry, two in the room, but one is heavily injured. Right, cool. Um, and, and, and then there are two. The there are three ruffians outside the room in the corridor looking in. Can I use my sling and try and attack one of the ones that are heavily injured? Yeah, please? there's the one guy on the floor. He's a, he's on the floor, so I'll give you advantage. On the floor, rock and roll. 18. Do you have advantage, yeah, so. 18, 22. 22 hits, ones. yeah, easily. D6 plus two, five, five. damage. Enough to like finish him off. Probably knocks him out because it's a sling and it's a bullet. <gasps> it like hits him in the head and he goes out cold. So this is the one that you had injured earlier, uh, Iraniel. So the, one of the ones on the floor just thunk, ugh, and then he just, his eyes flutter and he goes out cold. Just leave us alone, you nasty men. <laughs> I'm gonna <laughs> climb up the rope. And start climbing down. Climbing out, yeah. Yeah, so you, you get to that point where like, Bungo's, uh, sorry, Grundle's below you and is not quite finished and yeah. you're above him and you're like, come on, hurry up! And he's like, I'm going, I'm You going. were closer to the window than I was, so I imagine you slide down and just stop. And he's like, I'm going, going as fast as like, I can! This rope's not working! <laughs> um, all right. Uh, so we go back up to the top of new round now. The fire now, because you did delay it for a turn, but now the fire is beginning to spread. And this room is beginning to fill with smoke. Um, so those of you who remain in the room, at your start of your turn, I'm going to need a constitution saving throw. So we're going to start with Iraniel. I need a constitution saving throw. You're in the, you're out the room. Uh, yeah. Bye. <laughs> oh, that's a D12. That's a D12. That won't help. That won't help. It's been a long time. <laughs> It's been an age. 12. 12. What is this? Uh, 12 is enough for now. It's only DC 10 for the, for this first round. So the smoke kind of building through, not enough to do anything. Your turn in Raniel. What would you like to do? You have one on the uh, ground in front of you. Ahedi. Prone. Yeah. You were pregnant for what's going on. I had advantage because he's on the ground. He does, yeah. Uh, Absolutely. Oh, yeah. 24. Oh, yeah. Hits. Uh, me. So it's a two, but because I'm using great weapon style, it's a five on yes. the. On the dice. On the dice. Yep. So, uh, nine. Nine points of damage. Minimum, minimum nine damage. Nine. Oh my god. Uh, this one is, I'm gonna say, he's a little bit tougher, so he doesn't finish him off, but you kind of like stab through. Probably through his like thigh, he's like, he's like, ah! Cries out in pain, uh, but not enough to finish him off. Anything finish else, him off. Anything else you'd like to do? Um, 
You can see that the hobbits are out. They're, they're out the window. They're escaping. So now it's you, Borin, and uh, Ilvisar still in the room. We've been kidnapped. Get them on the sacks. Yeah, they've just got a sack at the bottom of the room. <laughs> <laughs> Can I. Ooh. So there's this guy on the floor. Mm, very injured. But very injured. I want to kick him. I want to knock him out. I can't. I've got nothing else. Uh, you Unfortunately, you do not have Surge of Vigor. Um, Which is why Elvisar is here, to be our warrior. Champion. I cannot do much else. There's Sorry? nothing I can do in the room to try and put out any of the fire as the... You could have a quick... If you want to make a perception check for me as a bonus action. Try. Yeah, give me a perception check. Uh, da, 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 da. 15. 15. There is a large uh, pitcher of water. It's probably used for, like, uh, <laughs> like wiping your face <laughs> and stuff. <laughs> yeah. But like it's like it's at the side near a basin, so like it just wasn't immediately visible. Uh, but yeah, you look around. There's this big pitcher of water. Oh. Can I look at that? Uh, no, yeah, your, 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 your actions and that are next to you. Can someone put that fire out? A fire extinguisher all along. Yeah. Uh, you on the next turn, uh, the ruffian leader is gonna look to the two that are still outside with him, and he's like, "The halflings have got out the window. Go downstairs, get them at the bottom." And then he's gonna come into the room and sort of look upon you. And he actually draws uh, not a long sword, but like a short blade. He like draws like a short blade, and he's like, "The rest of you, get your acts together, finish them off." Um, and he's gonna step up to you, Ariel, and try and strike you. you. And he right makes next time. two attacks. I'm going out oh. the window. Eighteen to hit, I'm afraid. Yeah. 18 to hit. That is going to be six points of damage from his first thrust. The next one is a natural one. Oh, thank um, do you? What do you want this to be? Do you want this to be like you disarm him? Or do you want to like, you know, knock him prone? What do you want to do with a nat one on this guy? I want to knock him prone. All right, sure. So like he stabs you the first time, kind of spins around, tries to take the second swing. You're ready for it this time. You parry the blade and then just with a like knock him in the face and oh, he gets stumbles down to the ground, knocking him prone. Um, that's the ruffian leader. Um, He's on the ground. Uh, Borin. How how close is this water to me? Oh, you can. I mean, it's in the room. So in a yeah. movement, you can get there, get it, and then move to the fire. And can I get out of the like start climbing the rope as oh, well, no, or no, 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 no? So it's an either it's or. Put the fire out or get. Out I of mean, room. there's more thugs on the way to the bottom anyway, so. Like, I, f I feel like... You could jump out the window and go find them. That's the thing, is I feel like <laughs> if I spend this turn putting out the fire... The hobbits We're all kind of going, so it's like, I'd rather go, especially because the hobbit... I, did I hear them go, like... Go oh, you them. heard this this ruffian leader be like, go get the halflings, they're yeah. escaping out the window. Although that halfling's doing a lot better than me, so... Um. But are we going to have to start taking damage because of... Yeah, well, it's Boren's turn, what do you want to do? It's your choice, you've got a few seconds here. Ah, the shouty lady shouted at me, so I'll go get some water and All right. um, okay. splash it. Yeah, I mean, action, you just grab the pitcher, you run over to like where the bulk of the fire is, you spray the water, and probably like grab like a towel or something from the same thing, and like the rest of it you can kind of, kind of put out, yeah, mm. for sure. Um, um, is there anything else I can do? Like, I don't seem to have anything. That would be your action, would be to do that. I can tell you about some old lore. You can, yeah, that's your, <laughs> yeah, you're good on like other things. Like, not every character is a combat character. Yeah, I'm definitely um, more an RP yeah. character. Yeah. Um, right. Can I position myself near the window, like at the end yeah, of that? Yeah, I'd say or? at the end of that movement, you can just position yourself there. Thing. Um, I'd say that you're moving around, there's enough threats that probably isn't, I'm not going to say you get an attack, but you're not leaving the room or anything like that, so you're okay mm. for now. All right? I think I think it just RP like, in response yeah, yeah. to the stern word from uh, Araniel. I'll be like, Barnabas will be pissed off if you burn down the inn. <laughs> I'll be like, yes, Mistress Ar 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 Araniel. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Whatever you say, Mistress Araniel. All right. I put the fire out, Mistress Araniel. <laughs> Two of the thugs. I did good. Praise me. Busy. <laughs> Two of the thugs are going to leave, so their whole turn is to basically dash. They're going to run down the stairs, then they dash to try and get out the inn. They're not going to. They're not down there yet. Back up the Next road. movement. Okay. They're, they're, not, they're not there yet. They can't see us. They can't see you okay. yet. You've got a turn before they get to you. Good. Uh, the other two. Um, Again, Bungo. <laughs> Oh, should I have done a con save at the beginning of because the fire? You did start there. Yes. Yeah. If you can give me a Constitution saving throw, please. Um, yes. Sixteen. Sixteen. You're fine. 
I'm a good girl. Uh, well ruled. Well, that was <laughs> I ruled myself. That was a very Tom Hazel <laughs> thing to say. One fight, Nilva, sorry, is dead. You have a badly injured one on the ground, and the leader. And the leader's also on the ground. And the leader's also on the ground. Um, so that is just one. The one who was barely injured is going to try and strike at Ilvasar. Miss five. Like, uh, sorry, uh, the tries to strike at you, Irani. I keep oh, me. you killed your one. Yeah, strikes you, fails, misses. Um, is going to get up from being prone though. Um, not the leader, the other one. Uh, that is their turn. Uh, we then go to Grundle. Bungo ponced my head. Can I look down and see uh, <laughs> anywhere? Ponced my head. So looking down, you are basically out the front of the inn at this point. It's sure. like looking out into the courtyard. It's nighttime. There are lanterns and torches as people are like looking in, and like people are like, "Is the inn on fire? There's smoke!" And they're kind of like, "What are those halflings climbing down?" Like, there's almost like a little crowd that's like gathered. Oh, so um, they're like, okay. Because um, I'm hoping that when I get to the bottom. I'll be able to find like something nearby that I could jump into. Oh, absolutely. I, oh, um, yeah. There's like a big box of like carrots that's been delivered or okay. like something like that. You're a barrel that you could jump into or like a little hay bale or something like that, 100%. You can have full Assassin's Creed it if you want. Sure. I'll also, I'll tell Bungo to, to run there as the moment uh, sure. she gets down as well. All right, give me a stealth um, check then. Stealth check. Also, what I'm bloody good at, plus eight. 18. 18. <laughs> Vanish. <laughs> Jump into the little barrel. Eat, eat <laughs> the carrots as you do. Uh, Grundle, that is Grundle's turn. Ilvisar. So, someone on the floor. So you have uh, the the leader is on the floor and he strike he struck twice at Iraniel. Uh, there is a heavily injured one still stood up, but he's like holding his like side leg and his leg. Sorry, he's been like stabbed through the leg. Um, the other two that were in the corridor have run out. They've run down the stairs. So you basically just have two in the room right now. The fire has also been put out. Con save is a. But you don't need to make oh, it because the fire was put out. Fire was put out. Um, in which case, anyone that looks like they're capable of moving, mm -hmm. I will stab them with a spear. Okay, yeah, there's still two in the room then. So you've got the. <laughs> where are you going with that, are you then? The leader's on the ground, which means you'd have advantage. You're very capable advantage of moving. Against him. Yeah, that's me, technically. <laughs> um, I will stab the one on the floor. Okay. Uh, that is a 15 to Could hit. Could you use advantage? Get that in that 20. Let's see it happen. 17. 17 still hits. Um, that is 11 points. Ooh, 11 points of damage. A heavy blow, but this guy rolls to the side and it kind of grazes his side. Like he seems a lot tougher, a lot more combat experienced. So it kind of grazes his side. Still a heavy blow. And he's like, ah, fair health, fair scum. And he just kind of calls the looks up at you. I want to pivot around him and pick up my helmet that I had in the doorway and put it oh, on. Yeah. <laughs> Slide it back on. I love it. I was keeping track of that. If you hadn't picked that up and left the inn, I was going to be like, oh, it's in the inn. Mm -hmm. like, was that the uh, leader you hit? It yeah. was, yeah. OK, cool. Um, so, Ilvasar, that is your turn. Anything else you'd like to do? Um, no. In that case, we go to Bungo. Bungo! Bungo! Bungo's going to shimmy on down the rope. Um, and following Grundle's advice, she's going to go find somewhere to hide. OK, stealth check, please. 17. 17. Ooh. 17 and 18. Wow. Good to know. Um, in stuff? fact, because you're a little bit of a thing, um, I'm going to roll the perception check for the two bandits to see if they find you now. Okay. Uh, back at the top of the round, Iraniel. I'm going to stab a leader on the floor, please. Sure, 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 sure. That's a natural 20. Oh, oh my god. god. I mean, roll the damage. It's a D10. Uh, we're gonna do we're gonna do old school D&D &D crit. So roll a two D10 and then add your modifier as normal. Remember, you can't roll lower than a five. Mm. So five plus seven plus four. So uh, 12, 16 points of damage. That is. How do you want to do it? How do you want to finish off the leader? Is this like a behead or is this like a plunge through the chest? Plunge through the chest. Is this him I think it's a. Uh... Uh, or uh, I don't know. She probably says something really cool, but I you can't think yeah, of it fine. right now. Uh, like, but this is a pretty brutal finishing. Like as you kind of like stab him while he's on the ground, right? Tell your masters not today. Okay. Yeah. Stabs your chest. <laughs> uh, he's just like <clears throat> kind of stabs him through. Uh, it's going to kill him, uh, but because it's a pretty brutal act of violence. Oh you will automatically gain one shadow point. Oh. Because oh. it was uh, finishing him off on the ground, like, you know, he's, he's you know, you're kind of this brutal blow. He's a but that's okay, like, shadow points do go away, they're not permanent, like, they, they go away in time. That's a guaranteed 
thing is not like a roll. So if you, uh, there is this thing where if, it, if oh. the shadow comes from a source of dread, there is a saving throw. Okay. If you perform a misdeed, an intentional misdeed, uh, or, or like an act of great violence, um, then it is automatic. You have no saving throw. Okay. But like I said, but it's, it's to represent that, like even Aragorn, there was moments where like Aragorn and Gandalf, many of the other heroes in Lord of the Rings, they were they are tempted by shadows. Yeah. And it becomes yeah, yeah. like you know the act of fighting a war to be in a violent person is to. No regrets. Yeah. No regrets. He was uh, trying to kill us. Uh, yeah. As he as you stab the one on the floor, the other heavily injured one like whirls on the two of you and just drops his weapons and looks like he's about to run. Like he's going to make a run for it, basically. Um, uh, so that was Raniel. You'll go. You still have movement though. There is this only just this injured one left in the room. I'm going to fire is out, so there's no immediate loop. risk. Can I go into the corridor? Mm-hmm. And there's no no more of them in the corridor. No. no. You can hear the footsteps basically, of like you can hear like Barnabas like where are you going? Oh, what's going on? Like shouting like. Okay. Is that smoke? Basically, I wanted to check on Barnabas. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So no, if I can like hear him, else. Yeah. okay, and there's not f- his inn's not on fire, then no. that's fine. All right. I'm all good. Okay. Uh, in that case, we go to Barin. I noticed in the shadow box, there's two boxes next to miserable and anguished, and I kind of just tick those anyway. No, cause... don't tick those. Okay. I know, I know Kim feels <laughs> those, but Boren doesn't. Uh, just, so those are very specific conditions. It called to me. Mm-hmm. Um, Boren, so looking out the window, do I see the two nerds who are running? Not these nerds, the So nerds. when you look out, uh, because it would be their turn off, directly after yours, so I'd say on your turn, yeah, you see them burst out of like maybe one of the side doors, and they begin like looking around, but you see them. Can I hold my turn that if they stray underneath the rope, I drop on them? Sure. <laughs> kind of like a control well, let's just, drop. Let's just say that that happens. Like a control yeah. drop using the rope, so it's not a complete free fall. <sighs> but I'm gonna drop sure. the full weight of a rich dwarf covered in. Absolutely, I love it. <laughs> um, Let's, I'm going to roll. Is there a way I could do it upside down so my helmet hits them first? Uh, <laughs> that would be, re- if you want to do that, that's an acrobatics okay, check. Okay, I guess that's concussion protocol. <laughs> Boot. Boots. Boots. Boots first. Um, you've also got all your pack and stuff, so you're, yeah, you're yeah, a hefty, true, hefty true. boy. Look, in my um, head, I wanted to go. No, you're not quite bomber of uh, bomber's proportions, but you're a big lad. <laughs> um, I am going to roll a dice. Yeah, I'm going to make a deck saving throw against DC 11. They don't get a bonus, so I have to roll a, a 12 or better, a 11 Ooh. or better. So I left just slightly under 50-50 odds here. Um, if they fail, they're going to take the full damage. If I succeed, they're going to take half damage. Okay. They don't know. No, just one. Okay. Just one of them is going to take it. So as they're looking around, one of them does pass under, and you... Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Rope burn on the hands. Eight. They take the full damage. Yes! Um, yeah. What is the weight of a full full dwarf? <laughs> Let me say. Well, how much are you carrying as well? I'm, I'm thinking of like a low wall. level spell. Do do 3d6. Roll 3d6 for me. One, two, three, four, five, four. Wow. Nine points. Oh, wait. Four, Didn't five, four. 13. 13. You knock. You don't kill him because it's like a, a bludgeoning, so it's a concussion. You knock one of these guys out flat. Like you land on him and you just hear a. As he kind of gets slammed into the ground, his mate whips around completely like, what? Like, <laughs> completely taken by surprise as you slam down on top of him, knocking one of them unconscious. Nice. Um, Did nice. you turn around and say what right next to the carrot wagon? Uh, yeah, sure. I'd say that, like, uh, he landed like next to where you were hiding. Cool. Nice. Um, all right. What kind of position you know? Uh, with that, that his mate, who was taken by surprise, is going to try and be like, uh, uh, and he tries to like take a swing for you. Completely straight. Misses. Completely. Uh, it's in like an uh, eight, I think. Um, so completely misses you. Uh, we then go back to Grundle. Go on, Grundle. Um, it's your time. So he's attacking. Behind him, you can see a carrot wagon. <laughs> yeah. Uh, some of the he's, he's, he's does not know you're there. He's focused entirely on Boris. Some of those right carrots start to lift up, and you see eyes. <laughs> <laughs> like the scene like in bloody yeah, um, yeah. yeah, yeah, like a uh, friend, a commando, just like. Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. Um, and I would like to uh, go up behind him, pull a pan out of my mess kit, mm-hmm. and just Dum. bang him in the back Dum. of the head. Sure, use your uh, whatever melee weapon I gave you. Just uh, use that. Which would have been a yeah, short sword. But just we'll say it's a but, pan. Because I'm, I guess I'm hidden, right? And you have also, advantage. Uh, next to... Yep, you have advantage so have and advantage. you would get sneak attack. And I get sneak attack. That's if right. You if I hit. 
18 plus 6, hits. so 24. Definitely hits. Which means I get 1d6 plus 4 and another d6. Yes. Uh, s- 10. 10 points of damage. Boren, you're kind of like drawing and you ready your axe, like you see this guy ready to fight no, you. And you, you've been in fights, but like it's always oh, dangerous, even against like thugs like this. Okay. And then suddenly you just hear a. And you look <laughs> as this man kind of like stumbles and falls to the ground and stood on top of a box of carrots <laughs> with a pan is the little hobbit uh, Grundle. I got him. Uh, I got him for you, Boren. You did well, lad. <laughs> um. <laughs> Excellent stuff, Grundle. Uh, with that, I'm going to very quickly, because I feel like we can wrap this up here. Uh, Ilvasar, just so you, would you, this, you've got this one guy left in the room. He's heavily injured, but he is basically holding his hands up. He looks like he's about to run. Uh, what do you do? I'm going to use my second elven skill to kip up his weapon that he dropped into my hand. Mm-hmm. I'm going to look at him with a stern look, a little glance with my beautiful blue eyes with emerald speckles. Jump out the window, cut the rope with the dagger that I just picked up. Uh. Are you still in there? I won't cut the rope. I feel like, no, I feel like he'd still do that, though. No, I don't think so. I, I don't think, like, he's an elf. I don't think that was the well, technically, technically, I went to find oh, if Barnabas. Oh, no, that's true, yeah, you're in the so corridor. I'm in the, in the corridor, so I've gone to find Barnabas. So, yes, so you do your whole thing. You yeah. do your cinematic thing. I cut thing. the rope, mm-hmm. I start falling, mm-hmm. but then I turn around and use the dagger at the end to just like throw slow it. my floor, fall. Oh, like ah. and then just gracefully, yeah, nice touch the ground. Easily done. Uh, are you proficient in acrobatics? Just to check or athletics? Uh, athletics, yes. Then in that case, you because it has to be something you're proficient yeah. in using yeah, an yeah. skill for. So yeah, this guy just watches in amazement as you like stamp on the hilt of the dagger, whoosh, flies up. You grab it, you like pirouette, you just move with this fluidity and grace, but also strength and as you reach out the wind cut the rope and then reach down it does leave a very ugly in the kind of like plaster of the the inn and the wood but you leave this like perfect groove as you just land probably in time to see uh young grundle just like knock this guy out um leaving these two unconscious bandits on the floor um and yeah you just immediately lay and you just hear this guy like he probably pissed himself uh you didn't see it but like he's definitely you pissed himself um and can smell it yeah Elf you, nose. El, elf nose, you definitely do. <laughs> Very pungent. What does your well, elf nose oh, no, smell? What does your more. elf nose smell? He used to drink more. Yeah. Uh, Bungo. Uh, at this point, you are the last one to act. I will say now that the 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 one remaining bandit is going to run and flee. So if we want, we can. This combat's over. Right? This party's over. Uh, I'll just pop my head out from wherever I'm hiding. Yeah. Go, oi, horrible! And then throw my <laughs> slingshot at the guy who's running. Uh, okay, so, because you're down on the ground, yeah. right? So the guy that you just terrified, like, comes to the window to, like, look down and, like, see what's happened. And then you look up <laughs> and go and see this guy there, and you're like, <laughs> and you're, like, <laughs> slinging with a rock. Yeah. Make an attack rock. Look him. You're hidden, so uh, advantage on oh. the attack. Five. 16, 20. 60, yeah, hits easily. And he's only got a few hit points left, so. Uh, three. This rock strikes him right in the forehead. His eyes flutter closed, knocks him out straight. That's amazing. Bongo got two of them. Thunk. <laughs> As he just falls down dead. Oh, well, not dead, unconscious. I got one with my butt. Yeah, so you did. That, you, that was a two. full dwarf kill. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, but it's uh, expected of you. Uh, Iraniel, you look behind you and see the kind of scene of devastation. Like, the room is no longer burning down. Uh, your companions are all outside on the street. The rope has very clearly been cut. Um, uh, but is there anything you want to do before you leave the room? Can I have a search of the bodies that are in here? Yeah, See if absolutely. they have anything. Because, like, obviously, I haven't seen the mark. I know you saw the mark, but I mm-hmm. wouldn't know that. Sure. Um, the brand that they had and sure, stuff sure, like sure, that. Sure, 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 uh, sure. If you can roll an investigation check mm-hmm. for me. You'll find some things, but let's see how, like, well how well you searched these mm, guys. Plus zero. Thirteen. Thirteen. Um, rummaging around, you would probably find... Mm, uh, you know, packing down the pockets of the leader, you find like four silver pieces, um, and you would find the brand. It's very clearly like it's kind of hidden. You have to pull down the clothing, but it's it's easily enough that you know 
they can show it off, like they can just pull their, their top down to show off this brand. Um, it is one that you would know to be, uh, you especially being a ranger of the north, you would know that this is a brand that orcs put on their sort of humans, like not servants, but like humans that work with them, like uh, like humans that have made pacts with orcs and goblins uh, and, and the enemy. Um, and you know that these are, it's often a sign used by those who are in the service as spies, as smugglers, as bandits. Uh, they often work for these orcs. Um, uh, but you don't find anything else really of note. The, he does have a short sword on him, um, but that is about it. Mine's better. I leave it. Sure. Uh, and in this case, you can make your way downstairs. Um, uh, uh, Barnabas is probably too busy, like dealing with like the horses and like checking on the room. Um, he makes sure that he, you know, asks that make sure that you're all okay. But he's not going to be too focused on what's happened. Uh, he's got his own problems to deal with. Um, I give. Can I give him the ah, four thing... silver that I found on the bandit? Oh, you and absolutely say, can. The room's not in the best condition. However, it's not burnt down. Oh no! I, I, I'm so. I just. I am so sorry that this happened. I. Uh, I wouldn't. I mean, they're a rough sort, but I wouldn't expect them to to, to try and murder somebody in their room. Uh, one quick clarification for the two of you: that brand mm. uh, it is almost in the shape of a wolf's head, like a, mm. a wolf's jaws. Um, and is that something that that doesn't spark any memories? I but you know, it's you, an orc you know, it's an orc brand, yeah, for sure. Um, mm. But yeah, Barnabas is like, well, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Thistlehart. That's very kind of you. Uh, we'll try and get the room ship shape up. I'm, I'm so sorry. I imagine you don't probably want to stay here this evening, but there's um, there's a stables at the edge of town. Maybe you could stay there or a campsite out of the way. But uh, uh, but thank you very much. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I, I wasn't expecting them to attack. The trouble like came fr from us. They were looking for us. So my apologies for that. We'll make ourselves scarce. Very good. Very well. Best of luck. And if you see if you see Gandalf, let him know that uh, he's always welcome. Um, but thank you very much. Uh, he just kind of he says just he kind of looks at you and says, uh, best of luck and safe travels. Uh, and with Stay that, you yeah you, you can uh, meet up with your allies who are out in the street. Uh, you can see that there's like a, a bit of a fuffle. Uh, maybe one of the gate guards has like come and he's like, oh, what are these lot doing then? We're fighting in the streets. I deal with them, and he starts like dragging them because they're unconscious; they're not dead. Yeah. So he like gets out like you know it's some. My job uh, to ask questions. He has like manacles, oh. and he starts like manacling their hands, like he's like Barnabas. Am I dealing? Am I arresting this lot? Are they fighting? And Barnabas is like, No, no, Henry, no, just the, the knocked out ones. They're the villains. And he's like, ah, I've seen their lot around. And he starts like handcuffing them and stuff. Like, oh, we'll take care of them. Um, can I be coiling up my rope? I imagine it's, it's maybe a bit. a bit shorter. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's now a 40 foot rope. Yeah, it's 40 foot rope. <laughs> it's now yeah. a 40 foot rope. Who Still is, good though. Who is the most hurt? Who needs seeing to? Probably. Me. I mean, I'm going to run up to you after run the fight. Down. Bungo, we did it! We got him! I saw you throw the thing and got, got two of them. The, the pan move was, was, was brilliant. Oh, thank you, that thank you. Good initiative, that and was you very good. Hiding in the carrots is going to help me, always does. It's very good. The, the training. You. I'm bleeding. Yeah, don't worry, I'll get my leeches on it. Don't you worry about thank that. Thank you. Oh, which one? Um, let's see. We've got uh, which one do you want? I've got I've got um, Bovril. I've got. Um... Oh, I bloody love a good Bovril. You love Bo yeah. Okay, here you go. A picture of Bovril. On. A stick Bovril. Oh, he's gross, isn't he? Do you want to use your use of leechcraft? Yes, I do. Yeah. All right, cool. It's a good way to show this off. So leechcraft, because it's not a magic spell, this is um, you know. You know, uh, Bungo pulls out a healer's kit, the leeches, bandages, that sort of thing. Maybe like ointments to like ooh, uh, help with the bruising and things like that. Um, the way this works is you're going to use up your craft slot. You have one. Um, you use that up um, and you can make a medicine check. Um, uh, and if you roll badly, you can use a use of your healer's kit to make the roll a 10 instead. Cool. But you can okay. roll it first and see which you prefer. 8 plus 5, 13 for the first one. Wow. Uh, or so, yeah, and then you use a use of the healer's kit to make it into a 10 instead of an 8 if you want. Okay, yeah, I'll use the healer's kit. Okay, so you make it a 10. So there's one use of it, so that your healer's kit should have a number of uses, I think, in your inventory in the bottom middle. Uh, oh, it might be on the back, yeah. Uh, or try bottom middle on the front page. 
healer's kit. Oh, here we go. Yeah. Yeah. So one use of that. So w with a ten, what would you your medicine check be? So that would have been a what I get? It was an eight. Uh, it'd be eight. ten. Uh, it'd be ten because you replaced it with a healer's 15. kit. Fifteen. Fifteen. So that means you get five hit points back because it's the check minus ten. So if you oh, roll like a okay. twenty-five, you actually get back fifteen hit points from that leech craft. Oh. Um, but this is the this leech craft ability is the only way to get hit points back during an encounter. Oh, the rest of the time, okay. you have to do it as part of a short or long rest. There is no wow. magical healing. How, um, no potions. Just out of interest, how, how often does the leech craft sort of recover? Long rests. Yeah. Right, OK, so it's not, yeah, it's not completely gone. Um, All right, so five back. How yeah. many hit points did you lose in that? I lost uh, ten. 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 Mm -hmm. I lost ten, so I'm down. Well, got yep. five down now. Um, a couple of quick notes on resting as well. Uh, while you are on a journey, long resting, uh, you can't take a long rest, and short rests become an eight-hour rest. Okay. Um, so okay. it's actually, so your short rest, like if you're in a dungeon, you can take a, an hour long short rest as normal, and long rest is the eight hour sleep. But on a journey, to stop you having it, yeah, you're traveling, is the idea is that your short rests become your sleep, and so right. you don't get like, like that ability on a journey that doesn't come back. Not yeah, until yeah. you spend a longer period of time in a certain Man. place. You have to basically Brutal. spend like 24 hours in a place to get your long rest ability back. Makes sense. Um, it just makes the traveling a little bit more like a important. Journey. And like, yeah, it, it's kind of like if you end up keep having encounters and events, it becomes very scary because you're not getting any opportunities to get that back. You're not like getting every day rest. They just walk, yeah. walk, walk, walk. Attacked by tweeds. <laughs> um, <laughs> I know what you're referencing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, now this brings us to a thing. It is night time. You are injured, some of you. You've taken bruises and things like that. Um, you have a choice. You can either try and find somewhere to camp nearby and sleep and rest, um, or you can begin your journey, uh, of which you will be able to rest along the way and stuff like that as well. Um, what would you like to do? So, I recall you saying earlier, I don't know if this was something that Grundle spotted, but um, there were more of them downstairs that the and the numbers had diminished slightly so mm -hmm. are there basically are there more of them around than what we encountered? There could be I mean like you I'd say that you probably wouldn't remember their exact numbers but um, the others uh, probably would there was about eight of them in total sure. and you just fought about six of them so okay. there are two that are missing um, but then also uh, Bungo spotted one out by the stables and the little light had been the one who had like set the horses free so it could be that those two were the ones who were sent off to, to cause a distraction. Okay. Uh, well, yeah. If it's not something I know, then I just ask. Like, are there any others? Did anyone see any more? Um, that sort of thing. Um, was that one by the stables? He was a right slinky one. Slinky. Mm. Oh, I don't like those types. No, he disappeared. He did. Disappeared into mm. the what? Into the, into the shadow. All right. Okay. So he could be anywhere. Mm. He could be right here. <laughs> it could be him. <laughs> um, Do you think it's me, Hobbit? I don't think it's him. He was up with us, remember? True, he was. An agent of the enemy would look fairer and feel fouler. I look at the blade that I took. Yes. I'm thinking back mm -hmm. 400 years and the stories that have been when told to me. When you were just born. He looks last, actually. When I was given a dagger. <laughs> <laughs> it's a 200 year <laughs> <laughs> First thing you're given. <laughs> um, yeah. Thinking about the orc mm. war, mm. The ancestors. You were told about. I mean, you fought orcs and things like that. You've you've encountered. You you fought the enemy many times, um, and uh, it is never an easy thing. And the fact that if these men were working for orcs and goblins, that means that there must be orcs and goblins nearby. Like they like probably at a distance like these. They're, but the like they wouldn't. They're, they're, they're working for somebody and they're not traveling to Mordor to do it. You know, like mm. that means that there must be the mountains near here or the hills or something near here. There, there's, there's the enemy of the, the, the agents of the shadow are here. I encourage this group that we leave immediately south from Bree and I'll probably also inform the innkeep, mm -hmm. maybe send some few people to check the foundations of your groundworks. Uh, oh, yes, of course. Uh, absolutely. Thank you, sir. Thank you, my lord. Check for tunnels. Very good. I will do. Uh, we will. And he, he takes that very seriously and he like, he's like, Henry, get get a couple of, uh, get some of the, the dogs and the, and the rat catchers together. We're going to check and check 
basements and cellars. We're looking for tunnels. And you hear him, he's like, oh, all right, I suppose we can do that. And kind of goes off and trundles off. But yeah, the, the Barnabas would 100% take you very seriously and like listens. Um, would Boren know about the connection between tunnels and orcs? Because like we didn't see the brand, so we no, you guys are telling us. No, I think us. that like if you overhear uh, 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 Ilvisar talking you can about. Call that. me Illy Willy if you want. Mm. Ilvisar. Let's put it in my brain. Um, idea. You. Yeah, I mean, like, you would certainly, like, tunnels for you would mean goblins. Like, mm. like, dwarves, that's your sort of, like, main in, as foe is, like, finding goblins in the deep mm. and things like that. You know, you're not from Moria, so we don't know anything about what's going on in Moria or anything yeah. like that. But, like, even in Erebor, like, in the mountains, yeah, like, tunnels are very, you know, goblins mm. and things like that. But I'd say that maybe you don't have as much experience with goblins and orcs. Like, for you, things like those creatures aren't your enemy. Like, mm. dragons, wraiths, things like that would probably be something more, like, you know because trolls I'm, and things. I'm like a messenger, so I'm more overland than underland. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and you're also you're not worried, but you remember your dad's stories about the goblins of Goblin Town. You mm-hmm. remember the stories of like um, the Ettons, the, the the trolls in mm-hmm. the forests, the spiders in my wood. You know that there are these powerful enemies out there, mm-hmm. but the elf and the ranger have a deeper connection to the enemy, to Sauron. Yeah. Right. You, but you, you, you're like, oh, tunnels. Like, oh, is it goblins? It's like, you enemy. might, you might think that it might be goblins or something. So it's, like that. yeah, it's really elf. Why are you telling him about tunnels? What do you know? Goblin infestation? Goblins. Let's journey and I'll inform you of everything I know. And I will regale uh, the entire history well, of the Elven War that's fine. against the Orcs. If we are starting a journey, that is a very specific thing, and there are steps that must be taken. I will then defer to the leader as to whether we should journey or not. Sure. <laughs> All right, well, since you're deferring to me. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, I look down and you're between us. (laughs) Hello. Hello. We should rest, but not here. If these these enemies wake up, they could report in. We should travel a short distance, make camp somewhere hidden, enclosed, take a short rest, discuss the journey ahead, and then we will tell you some more about these foes. Sure. The journey will be perilous, little ones. I think they have proven oh, nice. their worth. Uh, at this point, I though, two of them actually. <laughs> I, I would say, pan. like for example, like you, you can keep your pan. If Thank you'd you. like to replace your pan with a, a a sword for a hobbit, it's a dagger for a human. <laughs> you could easily probably take the one that um, Ilvasar call, or like you take one off the one of the unconscious There's guards. A short yeah, sword I, I do have a. Apparently, I have a short sword and a bow. Yeah. Um, so I'm decked out. So, yeah. It's just I also have a mess kit. I'm a hobbit, I mean, right? I mean, think, like, I'm not a killer. I put that on your character sheet. That doesn't mean that necessarily you have that. We can say that, like, oh, that sword, you pick that up now. That sure. bow, if you don't want to have that bow, you don't have to have that bow yet. Maybe you'll find one on your journey or something like that. But if you want to basically replace that pan with an actual sword from one of these foes, you could. Sure. Like, I'll you've got good. your sling, which I think is a much more hobbity weapon. I've got a dagger as well. Like, again, like, you could take that as, like, a, that's probably, like, an actual, like, knife, mm-hmm. like a hobbit knife yeah. for you. Um, but, like, for, for Grundle, this could be, like, you actually take one of their weapons to use. Or you can keep the pants, up to you. I recommend you take one for your safety. <laughs> I don't know. That yeah, one's really, really strong. It's got all over the place. Oh, that, that was scary. Oh, that, that was good. good. No, that was good. That was, was good. good. It was good. For your safety. Safety. For your safety. Great. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Rick, <Rick-high>. hi. <laughs> John's really gone. <laughs> <laughs> so this that. is everything I'm I hope to be. Except for campaign three, I'll tell you that now. <laughs> <laughs> you were, you what do you mean? So strong. <laughs> it would give it away, Rhiannon. We all know that you're going to play a Scottish dwarf. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, you're this is the wild axe. It's, <laughs> it's a cackle. It's a witch's cackle. <laughs> <laughs> Look, she's been busy being a mum. She hasn't been. She hasn't <laughs> been in this setting for a while. <laughs> this apparently is what adults get up to. Yeah, yeah, true. Um, <laughs> so, well, what are you going to think about that? You're right, Bungo. I'll take a sword. Um, <laughs> for your uh, if, for my <laughs> side. Uh, Il- uh, Mr. Ilvasar, Mr. Elfman. Uh, I know. I, I know you're. Your bow is broken. It's not quite like your elven standards, but I got a short bow if you want it, if you if you'd like it. It's very generous of you. You can spit on with it. You. <laughs> well, at least you could take the the stringy bit. Unfortunately, the string won't stretch to the length of my bow. Fear not. Right. I will recover it. Yeah, I mean, you you probably would have a spare. I think it would make absolute sense yeah. that you have. Look, it. I fixed it. <laughs> <laughs> 
It's amazing. I learned to wait for a second. With uh, with Iraniel's uh, leadership, um, what I'm going to say is you guys can take a short rest. So we're going to basically start the journey rules of resting now. So you're going to get a head out. You would probably lead them to like a little camp in the woods, uh, like just south of the of Bree. Like you take them to a small copse of trees, and it's like a little safe place that you've set up, like for your own travels when you need to like be stay nearby. Um, but this is a short rest. So you can spend hit dice to recover, and in fact, Bungo has a special ability for that. Anyone really? who's doing hit dice replacement? Yeah, you're spending hit dice to get hit points you. back. What would happen All if we you. do? Okay, you yeah. die. <laughs> you die. You die. You die. You die. <laughs> they get an extra d6. HP for each hit dice. Wow, spend. that's oh, huge. All of us. Yeah. It's like so you, if you spend, yeah, up to four people. So oh. Bing bosh. Yeah, sure. Because you didn't get well, hit at all, didn't I get hit. I'm, I didn't get so hit. So an extra either. d6. Yeah, that's a lot. Oh my god. So per hit dice like, you spend. Oh no, so. that's okay. Alright. I am back to full health. Yeah, me too. Yeah. But remember, hit dice don't come back until you get half back when you take a full uh, long rest. Come back. <laughs> <laughs> Leave now. <laughs> right. So with that, just because we're running out of time, and I just want to get the journey started, because journeying yeah. is a big part of this game. So the way it works is uh, I actually need to give you guys something. Oh. So and can you first, before I give you this, <laughs> uh, okay. what is your, so is your planned route from Bree, you're going to follow the green way down. Oh, yeah, we didn't actually no, talk about this, did we? Green way. How are you going to get to Sanford then? Well, we we didn't. We need to discuss that. That's asked great. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I will, then I will let you to. discuss it. We, we, we're we're interrupted. Sure. That's rudely. We were rudely interrupted by some by ruffians. All means. And thugs. Um, Horrible lot. Dick the Barrow Dance and the Greenway. Is that how you're starting this discussion? <laughs> Neither of which are, are are safe. Apparently, you were telling us about the Barrow Dance. Right. The the. You elf. might want to check well, it off my my camera. <laughs> no. Nobody cares about us. The elf was speaking of a curse. A curse in a sense. There are spirits that lay there, greedy ones. <laughs> there is a long history of this place. It used to be quite a noble place for the Dunedain. I'm surprised you do not know of it. I rolled a one, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> Either way. Um, the Witch King of Angmar sent spirits and demons upon, set upon the barrows, and now it is those spirits that stole the armors and jewelry of the place and live in that cursed land. Baron, can you give me a wisdom saving throw, please? <gasps> oh. and, and Grundle, too, actually, because your path of shadow is dragon sickness. Oh, okay. Twelve. Uh, what was the save, well, sorry? A wisdom saving throw. Wisdom save. Oh, my Jesus Christ. Christ! That's the curse! The curse the is curse. upon us. <laughs> this is cursed. That is cursed. <laughs> Everything is cursed. Uh, well, sorry about that. We'll fix that. Wisdom uh, um, So I got a da -da 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 14. 14. Okay, you're both fine. There is definitely, <laughs> when when Ilvasar mentions jewels, there's definitely something with both of you where you're like, ooh. But you kind of like, no, no, it, you know, it's fine to stay. Ah, oh, 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 yes. Uh, but yeah. Uh, I will make a point. The Greenway, the Barrow Downs are close to the Greenway. The Greenway is is not, doesn't go through the Barrow Downs, but it borders it close, it. Close so, to. Yes. But so you're speaking about the Barrow Downs. Mm. I'm speaking about the Greenway. Yes. Got it. Right. Tell us of the Greenway. Ghosts part. and curses on one of them. Does anyone know about the other one? Segue into. Get off the road. I didn't tell you before, and my voice is gone again. Right. You're a bit more posh, <laughs> you're a bit more sort of, yes. Yeah, oh, yes, yes, there we go. There we are. I don't know where yeah. everyone's coming from nowadays. It was the smoke inhalation made me go a bit common. You said the, um, bridge, the bridge was destroyed. The bridge said. is destroyed there, yes, and the road is overgrown. There are a few people and villagers along the way, but they're a bit used to... So the bridge you're referring to is Tharbad, which is all the way far south. So it actually the bridge really wouldn't impede your journey. To the Sarn, bridge so. wouldn't actually impede our journey. It's quite <laughs> far away oh, right. <laughs> think about it. Um, yes, I thought... Geography is difficult. So the bridge is fine. I'm the bridge struggling. is fine. So What's this the is the green way here. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've never been on a bridge before. <laughs> oh, so is so, here. It does so sound. It does sound to me like the Greenway is perhaps the preferred option. 
where the screen is. You so. can go off the beaten path. Like, if you wanted to take a really roundabout way and go you Into know, the multiple world. months Fire around, Mordor. you could do. I, I just think <laughs> if it's a choice between an overgrown track and a cursed by the witch king, la da la la. Ooh, um, overgrown, that's good Good for us. We can hide, yeah. 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 Overgrown. Overgrown's good. I, I would prefer that way, too. Then it is so. Let us not forget that the darkness is upon us and it is crawling ever closer, closer than I ever anticipated. Oh, right. right. I haven't forgotten about this. Yeah. That's burned we don't memory. actually know why we're here. <laughs> I have explained that none of us know the shadow that we are currently facing. We are to find out. The shadow stretches beyond and it stretches ever further. He far. seems to know quite a it bit more. It clings at the very He's life. got a history with the enemy, as do I. Orcs are upon are... us. <laughs> Goblins. That? Oh, I know goblins. All that that is evil. Why are you looking at me when you say evil? <laughs> I'm not a racist. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> I've had 400 years. <laughs> so with that, uh, with a kind of a path vaguely selected to follow the Greenway south and then head off towards Sanford, uh, part the first part of the journey is to duh, 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 uh, is to uh, assign roles, in fact. Mm. So um, one of you roll. will need to be the guide. The guide is in charge of all decisions concerning the route, rest, and supplies. Uh, this will translate to the game as well. Like They will decide when you rest, they will decide the path that you take, uh, etc. Um, mm. People can have multiple roles. The only exception is the guide. Only one person could be the guide. Nobody can help the guide. The guide is on their own. You also have hunters. They are in charge of finding food in the wild. Me. You have the lookout in charge of keeping watch. And then scouts who are in charge of setting up camp and opening new trails. You can have multiple roles. You have a penalty the more roles you have. I'll be a scout, please. Yeah, what, what, what sort of abilities well, are assigned to... Uh, but I'm not going to tell you that. Okie doke. I, I've told you their roles and their function. Common sense. So yeah, I wonder if guide, lookout, scout, hunter, hunter. hunter. Yeah, well, hunter roles. And um, just because it'll be easier because you can write it down here. This <laughs> is your journey log. Oh, Ooh, oh sweet. I that's lovely. Oh, that's Very great. cool. Okay. So I've redrawn your path. So Bree is here. Yeah. And then San Ford is down here. These are all hexes. It's quite faint, but there are hexes on it as well. Oh, yeah. You record um, who has what roles here. Uh, there's notes and things like that. You can also keep a journal of any events that happen. Um, and they keep them down here. But whoever is the guide, I'm going to say, is going to actually keep a track of that and mark their journey. I love this so much. Yeah, um, I wonder if um, if Scout might be a good one for both the Arbits. Mm. Finding I think a new trail. Lookout would be lookout would be quite well, good. Well, my, my perception is terrible. Uh, I'm definitely mm. hunting. What do your elf eyes see? I'm hunting boy. Okay. Yeah. I am what do your seasoned eyes hunter. See? Nothing. I know what I'm doing with that. I don't feel it. like my boy fits into any of this because my perception's. A flat roll. You can just choose to help with a roll. Yeah. But all roles must be filled. There must be one of each, all of all four. Would you be the guide there, Ranger? I suppose Gandalf did kind of leave me there, didn't he? I mean, if we're doing makes sense. guide, lookout, scouts, no, no guide, hunter, hunter, scouts, then it's lookout for me, but I've got a flat zero perception. Oh, you're not going to be able to do everything. No. Yeah. Yeah. Unless one of the hobbits. Unless you prioritize, you know. Uh, looking out versus hunting. Like I said as well, like you could just help and give advantage to mm. another role. Like, but you need all four filled, so one of the hobbits would need to be would the lookout. Need to be a lookout, and then you can be a scout, maybe. Yeah. You can uh, climb those trees. <laughs> Look. Well, <laughs> out. Like a gremlin. Katie, do you want to take this thing? Because it sounds like you're definitely going to be the guide. I will help. And start noting down who's what role. Uh, Grundle. You're helping. Right. Yeah. So you're going to help the, the one scout. Uh, scout. One yeah. Look out. So it means you'll have advantage on your roles. Um, hell yeah. And it means also, so the reason that we pick this, because it sounds like it's pretty locked in, <laughs> is events can happen, and those events are assigned to certain roles. Um, if an event comes up for the scout, 
it will be Grunnel who makes the roll with advantage because he's being helped, but it also means that uh, Borin and Grunnel, if there are any decisions to be made or if there's any interactions with characters or anything like that, it is these two that are doing it. Cool. Wow. Okay. Mm. Um, cool. Whereas it might, if it's a lookout, it's going to be all Bungo. All Bungo, baby. All right. Nothing so we have our guide, we have the hunter, <laughs> we have the lookout, and we have the scouts. Yeah. All right. I'll let, give Katie a chance to write that down because then I need Katie to make a roll. Oh no. What she kind of is the evening, roll. right? Huh? Uh, you no, you did take a you took one rest out in the wild, so we're actually gonna be starting off on the morning of the day. Yeah. Because um, you did take a, a rest, like there was a short rest, well, a long rest, an eight-hour rest. Now I know the stomachs of hobbits. <laughs> I assume you're both hungry. Well, we'll say that you had a meal at the inn. Oh. We'll say that you ate last night. So, you know, but from now on, you are going to have to track your food and your rations oh. and things like that. And you will find the first and second breakfast. No. Eleven. No. Uh, the game does not uh, appropriate. There are no special rules for hobbits eating twice oh. as much food. Ah. I think they should be. I think hobbits yeah. should have to eat twice as much food. But oh, yeah. um, yeah, if I can just take that map back for a second, I'm just going to I'm going to show it onto you on the thing. Uh, so I'm actually going to draw the map. So, so uh, in fact, you can do this as well. So you're going to set your journey path. You're going to draw a line from Bree to here, keeping in mind that you can't cross rivers without a ford or a bridge. This black line is a river here. Um, you can pass through hills and things like that. I need you to draw the route that you are going to take. The exact um, journey. So that, yeah, is it like the exact path? The, the path that you and your company wish Down to take. To the you don't have to follow the road. You can go across hills and things like that. Is that like hex to hex? Hex to hex. Right, yeah, okay. draw from hex to hex. So at first, we'd like to head uh, out from Bree. And this is just going to be your planned path. The path might end up deviating. So you want to go by the road? Uh, I was just going to suggest the greenway over the burrow uh, down because yeah, overgrown path seems Let's, a bit um, better than cursed path. Considering they're already on us, I think we should use the road to be fast mm. and get there. Yeah, traveling on roads will make any events you encounter a bit easier because it is easier traveling. And Plus, I've got my helmet. I can look behind us. But you yeah. want to take. I can just turn my head and I'll then. Look. I'm looking behind me. But I'm looking forward and glancing, and I'm looking back. See, you drawn it? Very yeah, It's just on the road. Very He's just going to follow the road exactly. For until until we come back. to a part okay. where we need to. Would you like deviate. that, Dwarf? No. I'll use your cut rope if you like. <laughs> One, two, three. 40 foot is still quite long, though. I cut off 20 foot. I'm, I'm fine <laughs> with it. He like, went down and went. Yeah. Yeah, you just cut into like really small. Fucking dwarf. I hate dwarfs. 20 wow. foot, gone. Where did it go? <laughs> wow. I <laughs> ate the rest. <laughs> All right. So at the moment, that is eight hexes you're currently traveling across. So yeah. the first thing we're going to do is, uh, so imagine that this is, uh, Ar Araniel is like laying out the map, showing you the journey you're going to take. You're preparing your provisions and things like that. Uh -huh. The first so. thing that is going to happen is I need you, Araniel, to make a travel check. Ooh. Can I use my runs of law, please? You absolutely can. Yes. yes. So that is a D6. What? It's like a Barnic inspiration. So many things. Yeah. So that's one it's use of your rhymes of law. I wrote a little rhyme. Can I? Uh, can this, a, a, a hundred. This is Lord of the Rings. Yay! Of course, you can read your poems and rhymes. Yes. I wrote. I did. I sang a song. Our new friends they gather. Adventure we frown to. Cast back the shadow and cover new ground. The grey one he calls for him we we strong. Our songs will be merry. Our road will be long. Yay! Yay! Rhiannon, one day you have to play a bard. Because the fact, the yeah. speed of which you write stuff like that is amazing. so ready for you to say, Well, you did that then. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god. Um, I'm 17, 18, 19, 20, 22 with the D6. 22, an easy success. And in fact. 26, you said. 22. 22. Perfect. Um, in that case... 22? 22. Uh, no, it's perfect. Yeah. So, the way that what that role is for, by the way, is to determine how many hexes away your first event is going to happen. So obviously if you roll badly or if you fail, they happen quicker, which means you have more of them as you go. Okay. Um, because you beat the DC by more than five, it's going to happen four hexes away from your starting point. So if you count on your path, if you go four hexes, so one, two, three, four, and then mark like with an X or something. 
Uh, perfect. That is going to be our first event. Now, that takes you, uh, moving at your current speed, that's going to take you four days to get there. So if everyone can please like mark off. a day off, per hex. Day per hex, that's exactly it. If you're moving slower, it takes more time. Um, but for the simple, this first journey, we're just going to do it as one day. So on your things like tra uh, rations and things, please mark off four days' worth of rations. Oh, oh okay. I think you have anything. I've got ten like rations. Oh, yeah. right, check on the back. back. Yeah. Uh, oh, ten, yeah, of course. Yep. Okay. Six rations. All righty. And then it's event time. Woo! I'm going to roll to see what kind of event we have. <gasps> uh, to, to whom it is. It is uh, a D3, three hunters. Uh oh. I come back with 10 up. elk on my back. Uh, can you please make Breakfast. a. I spat everywhere again. <laughs> this is a, uh, this is a hunting, <laughs> hunting check. Another new skill. Okay, yeah, hunting nice. check. Yep, yep, yep. Got plus five on that bad boy. Tim's saying he's got a watery mouth. <laughs> Elves have very hydrated mouths. Yeah, what else? The Lambus spread. <coughs> Natural mother shitting 20, Mark. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Uh, 25 journey. 10 uh, elk. I think we are getting that on my 20 back. 20 elk. Ponce. I needed to roll what type of event it was first, but we're going to find that out now. <laughs> sure. Um, so it's fine. And this is in the land. Whatever it is, he fucking smashes it. Okay, great. This is a, this is a great one to have. So whilst you are out hunting, Elissa, you end up following, uh, you are hunting some game. Deer, uh, some local deer, kind of like you know grazing um, and things like that. And this is a fairly; these are big, hilly, grassy hills, um, and there are ruins and dotted things around here and that, but like no thick woodlands. So it's strange to see deers out here. Uh, but you do end up following them and tracking them and hunting a couple, and you catch a young deer. But as you are hunting it, you notice uh, another deer one that you didn't spot, that you hadn't been hunted. And when you watch and follow its uh, trail, like as it leaves, kind of it watches you kill uh, the, the deer that you have been hunted, and then it turns and sort of gently moves away. And something draws you to it. You, you pick up the carcass and you travel and you follow, almost as if you were hunting this other deer again. But by doing so, it reveals a shortcut you actually find a new trail, one that has not been walked, not through the Barrow Downs, but through the hills themselves, a safer path. Um, Clever girl. <laughs> uh, if you, you can choose to take this shortcut. Um, the shortcut does take you through more difficult terrain, which is gonna make the journey a bit more tiring, but it will reduce uh, the journey by one day. Ooh, that's a whole day. Mm. Mm -hmm. I will let the team know with a dear ponced mind back. The fellowship. Yep. Oh, so, go from, decided, uh, right? so you would have had four days left to travel. This would t take it down to three days of travel yeah. left. I slammed the deer down. <laughs> nice. Perfect. Found a shortcut. We are taking it. Shortcut to what? To it is, it is the you should have said mushroom. It is also the decision of the guide if you take the shortcut because it's part of the journey. <laughs> no! So it is down to... Yes, we will, take, we will take the shortcut. All right. It's perfect for hobbit sizes, but we may have to cut through. All right. Dwarfs okay. will be fine because they're very, very small as well. All right. Uh, <laughs> uh, Am I being hate crime? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it works. Um, with that, uh, we then have to go to the guide, and I need another travel roll for you to see oh. uh, how the rest of your journey proceeds. Just a straight one this Proceed. time? Uh, yep, it's just a normal travel roll. Sixteen. Sixteen is a Brain. success. It's only a normal success. Um, you are going to have so your next event is going to happen three days away. So it's going to happen just before you reach your destination. <laughs> We're here. Yeah, ah, it's, I know. It's always <laughs> just before you reach it. I see it. Um, can you roll uh, d twenty for me, please, uh, Katie? Seventeen. Uh, Seventeen. Okay. Sure, for so. So this one is the night just before you arrive at Sarnford. Um, and I appreciate we are basically about to wrap the session up, so this is going to be the last thing that happens. Um, just before you arrive um, at Sarnford, on the road, uh, as the hills of the Greenway, passing through the Barrow Downs, you witnessed many sights. You saw ruins. And there were many nights when, looking out past the Greenway, you saw formless things moving across uh, the, the barrowed hills, but they never approached. 
And on the last night, just before you reach the edges of the Barry Hills, you see this old ruin, sort of old ruined watchtower, long, from long, long past, thousands of years old, from the first age. And as you are sat there, you notice a small campfire, and there is, in fact, as you approach, you begin to hear the soft sound of an elven's voice, an elf's voice, um, just gently singing. The leaves were long, the grass was green, the hemlock umbles tall and fair, and in the glade a light was seen of stars in shadow shimmering. Tinuviel was dancing there to music of a pipe unseen and light of stars was in her hair and in her raiment glimmering and sort of as he reaches that note almost stops and you see that dressed in a kind of green long cap with a feather dressed in these bright green robes and playing on this kind of white wood lute is a very handsome looking elven man very similar to um to uh, uh ilvasar but of a different type you know, the skin is slightly darker um almost like a, a kind of a richer brown color um and they just kind of look up and glance and say, ah, what ho, travelers? Not one, often that one travels along the green way, uh, especially not so close to a place of frightful dread. Uh, he just says, please come sit and enjoy my fire. It is uh, far too cold a night to be spent alone on the, on the road. Do I recognize them in any sort of way? You, where would, they're from? you would know that this is an elf of Lothlorien. Oh. Uh, this is one of not idly. This is one of Lady Galadriel's servants. Uh, uh, I you don't know their name. Tilt my head mm -hmm. ten degrees to the right and very <laughs> gently nod. The same ten degree nod is returned. <laughs> uh, and yeah, they would just uh, kind of smile and, uh, and and bid you welcome. Uh, this is the uh, chance meeting. Um, uh, uh, of you basically encounter a uh, an elven fellow uh, who is called Callan uh, here, Callan here, uh, an elven minstrel, um, who invites you to sit at their camp, um, and you can spend the day. Normally, I would role play out a full scenario of you having a lovely chat, uh, but ultimately, this uh, makes your saving through at the end of the journey a bit easier, uh, and it favours the company and might offer you a bit of uh, hidden lore or knowledge. But that is unfortunately where we're going to have to end today's episode. Okay. Uh, Maybe we'll wrap up. Maybe we can have a flashback to what Callum yeah. here yeah. does the next time we play. But when we when we next, we are going to continue this, I think, yes. um, with you guys arriving at Sarn Ford uh, and investigating what might be going on here in the Southern Downs. Um, uh, we might be a uh, few. We might change the cast up a little bit. Some people might vanish and come back and all that kind of stuff. Um, but we're going to continue this. Put on um, the one ring at another time. But I hope you've enjoyed that. This has been Lord of the Rings role playing so game. It was really fun. The travel mechanics are yeah. really I love the lore. Well, somebody might be using some similar things yeah, for future campaigns. What November campaign, 5th, Mark? November 5th, baby! Yeah. Oh, yeah. Campaign 3. November campaign 3, three of... Yeah. <laughs> Hush phone. Say it again. Sorry, say it again. <laughs> Hush phone. Can um, I November 5th? Campaign... <laughs> Three of High Rollers, Althea, the Dragon Empire. It is coming November 5th. It's a brand new world. It's a brand new story, brand new characters. It's a fresh start. It's the perfect time to jump in and watch us play D&D in a brand new original world I've written with amazing new characters. Um, and we have got some pretty great surprises in store for you in the build up to it. We do. Boy, we do. howdy. Yeah. Look forward um, to those. You'll be able to see those on YouTube, on Patreon. Patreon. If you want to see them early, Patreon, Twitter, Patreon, Patreon. 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 Place. And uh, YouTube members. Yes. And also, just by being a Twitch sub and joining our Discord, you get access to those as well. Yes. We're going to be showing um, you some fun stuff, but yeah, if you want to see early, if you want to see stuff as soon as possible, Patreon yes. and YouTube members for sure. Also, I had two things real quick. Um, Let's do. One, I want to say a big thank you because we had a, uh, a we were blessed by a shanty party. Oh. A shanty oh. party! Oh. oh, well. So thank you, thank, thank you, uh, Jeffrey and Alan as well. So thank, you. thank you both. Thank you. Um, thank you for the shanty party. The new affiliates, I believe, as well. Yes. Wow. Congratulations. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, thank you for raging and also, holy crap. It is so good to be back playing, oh, just role playing in this room. It, we haven't done well, that's it. That's true because I felt blessed because I got to do it more recently than you guys did. We so, oh. do, we do we do donations anymore? 
Should, nah. we, do, <laughs> should we have a look? <laughs> have a look. I, well, have a look because, because I added. have to mention once again. Thank you to our sponsor, Moonlight Maps, and their Play the Dream Kickstarter thank coming you. October tenth. The Kickstarter starts. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can go and check it out live now. But if you're not, go and click the link. You can follow it, and then you'll get updated when it goes live. You get there are going to be eight packs, eight of these packs, which have got all oh, different oh, terrain maps really in it. Cool. But also, they come with sticky cling terrain. Rhiannon, do you want to hold that up? You get the sticky cling terrain. That just slaps down. It's easily pulled. On and off. Peel it off, stick it peel on, it off, stick it off. It's pretty cool. It's, it's great not stuff. Time use thing. Um, Boil them, really, them. really good maps. Oh, boil them, mash them, stick them in a stew. Stick, stick them on a map. Um, but yeah, on your map. really good <laughs> stuff. Uh, go check those out. Thanks again for sponsoring us, uh, guys. Don't forget as well, uh, MCM Comic Con at the end of this uh, month. I'm going to be there on Friday for Woo. a meet and greet. Uh, 2 p.m. Friday for my meet and greet and a DD one shot with a mafia halfling wedding at 4 30 on the center oh. stage. And then also, Whale, if you want to come and see me, a bunch of us, Wales Comic Con, Woo. November. 18th and 19th will be at Wales Comic Con as well. Now Tommy's going to tell you about all the donations and lovely messages we've been given. Is it Crispmas? Because we had Whoa. a donation from Crisp E uh, for a half hundo. Thanks to the game this week. Great to Thank see you, you all. So much. so much fun. There you go. Thank, Thank you very you much. Christmas. Thank you so much. All right, that's it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, well, thank you very much, Crispy. Thank you very much, everybody, for tuning in and watching. We hope you enjoyed. This is actually really fun to do this little yeah, Lord yeah, of the Rings. Yeah, we're, as great. you can probably tell, we're all big Lord of the Rings fans. I'm most of us. Yeah. Watching it. No, hey, I, I'm, I'm into really... it. I uh, messaged my husband halfway through and I went, Can you go and buy some camembert, please? I'm really <laughs> oh, <laughs> I really yes. want some camembert. Yeah, so. Well, with that, let's all go home and enjoy delicious camembert, lembas bread, uh, whatever it is. I'm going to go and say fancy. hello to my cat, Pippin. Yeah. 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 Uh, until then, we'll see you soon. Take care. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 See ya. Bye.